This is your annual reminder that you probably want to update your desktop backgrounds. It gets kind of lame after a bit of time. I don't know. Mine are all at a low resolution. I should fix that. Anyway, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and A stream today on this fine second of September, twenty twenty-four. I hope you're having a wonderful week. We'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My, uh, well, I guess it's been, you know, it's, it's not been too long in September, but uh, you know me. It's another another week. Another. Oh my gosh, I've done so much stuff. So, but. You know, we're at September. I'm starting to think, okay, we're in the back third of the year now. Get terrified. Christmas is coming up. Not now. Also, October is coming up next month. The spooky month. I don't know. We'll jump right into the game today. So, on the last stream, uh, worked through the, um, I guess it's technically the first of the official three expansions people treat with Duke Nukem 3D, uh, which was Duke It Out in DC, and it was actually pretty all right. Uh, we did Duke Zone 2 the week before as well. Uh, this week, we're going to try and do a double feature. I'm going to try and get both Duke Nuclear Winter and Duke Caribbean Life's a Beach uh, done in the same stream, because Duke Nuclear Winter is very short. Let's jump into it, shall we? Here we go. Everybody likes Christmas, even Duke Nukem. Sadly, there was almost wasn't a Christmas this year. It all started with a telegram. Duke learned that those alien bastards had once- Oh my gosh, I can't read that. The feminist elven militia have captured Santa. They brainwashed him and are using him in a plot to take over the world. And I'm gonna sit on this screen for a while. And so, children, our story begins. And that, uh, yeah, that's the plot. That's, uh, that's your quick plot. I like how they... The music is tremendous. Uh, we actually do indeed have a different logo. Slightly. A slightly different logo. But Duke Nuclear Winter is, uh, indeed, uh, an expansion. This is made by the same people who did Duke Zone 2. Uh, which may, unfortunately, set us up for some failure. Uh, it replaces, uh, I guess that would be the second episode. Sup, Fetty? How's it going? Uh, it replaces the second episode, and then we proceed to lose the other episodes. Uh, they're still there somewhere. Um, Duke Nuclear Winter is seven maps. No secret levels. We'll just dive right into it. And you'll probably see why people don't love this one a ton. So let's set up the save slot. So, uh, win the winter, I guess. I don't know, we'll go with this. Uh, this level's called Deja Vu because, uh, you may spot the Deja Vu. Got a shotgun chilling up there as well, but, uh, you may, uh, feel like we've been here before. Did I just trigger? Ah, oh, it's like, nuts. Uh, there is one very, very nice thing, uh, you'll notice right off the bat, though, and that's, uh, most of our regular enemies that are, you know brought back are, uh, they're wearing Santa hats. Or, uh, the chain gunners have a... It's time you don't watch Watch Your Lemon, though. That is true, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, they may have, a uh, little Santa hats on. Little antlers. Uh, also, this area hasn't blown up, so... I can't interact with that. Is it normal that there's no audio output? Uh, that is not normal. You're right. It's in the record- sorry, I forgot to- I've got two different buttons. Sorry, good for catching that. I've got two different buttons for, um, doing the audio, and the one- there's one always recorded, so if you're on the YouTube VOD, you're gonna wonder what's- you know, is- is, is Fetty going insane? Trust me, on the Twitch VOD, it's not there for the- for the first minute, sorry about that. Um, although the music is, uh, yeah. This is how you play pool, right? You just smack it from this side. Actually, have you seen the clip from, uh, the Black Ops- f I was about to say 4. The Black Ops 6 beta. There's like a pool table and you can actually, like, shoot it and it always- Every ball goes in every time. But it's just kind of impressive if you've never Shake done it, it before. Oh, exactly. This is just like a midi jam- I don't remember there being a screen here. I wish I could open the bit where the red key card used to be, but, uh, yeah, no, this is just, uh, E1-L2, again. Oops, hello. Ran right over him. Uh, is this from the campaign? Um, 
the be the multiplayer. I think it's just a multiplayer demo. Uh, here's all of our new enemies. We have the snowmen. We have these guys, which just are literally the tanks from uh, episode four. They even have the button that may potentially be on their backs. Uh, but they still kind of shoot you, which is very annoying. I'm going to try my best to try and hug him, but they, they are an absolute pain. Uh, the, these guys are just replacing the flying dudes. Uh, I think all the expansions are canon, but I don't know if people like him enough to make them canon. Uh, Randy Pitcher doesn't like this enough. He, uh, I think explicitly probably doesn't like this one because of the, the feminist elven militia, uh, villains. Um, and potential- eh, there's probably a bit more that's a bit charged, like this one's a bit off the rails. Um, i definitely say the quality of this one is uh, a bit mixed. But at least these guys, the big snowmen, are actually not really that bad um, to take out. Yeah, like the music just, you know, it loops in kind of weird ways. And you can see that we've already taken out half the enemies because, uh, don't know if it's being just like, Randy, I was I was gonna mention um, Gamergate this stream as well, just because uh, it's been the 10 year anniversary of that, and uh, there's been some interesting, um, like I think take homes. I was gonna launch into a topic about Concord to start off, and it's one where like I see some people decry it if like people were part of the Gamergate crowd, but like I'm legitimately like, bro, I think there's a lot to talk about that's not even about. That. And it's all it's all politically charged. It's all got a bit of that going on, but I, I I'm gonna try and like, you know, wh whatever people's opinions are. There you go, activate something. Oh, the yeah, this use this is a secret here in the original game as well. I just never <laughs> activate that. But it's like yeah, this whole area in there is not there. Um, I think they still got the the bathroom section. There you go. Um, but yeah, I might as well launch into that topic. So I think probably the. Mm, it's not the biggest, because it's about a flop. But the, the the most sort of significant news of the week is um uh Concord as a game. I've mentioned it a couple of times. Concord is a 5v5 uh best secret in the next level. Oh, you're gonna have to tell me about that as well. In the church room behind the altar. Alright, I'm mentally prepping myself. Wait, no, sorry, wait. No, 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 church. No, no, no. That's the original game. That's got that. I'm playing the the, the Christmas one. We're going backwards. <laughs> uh, do you like that, by the way? This is here. What's this? Where did I get the height from? Oh my goodness, jeez. At least they, you know, at least it's a little bit more than uh, what's typically there in this level. That's probably the right. main issue is that it's novel, it's not novel enough, it's in a genre. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the nail on the head, like, like, what would encourage people to buy Concord? Uh, because for me, it seems like, okay, well, it's an Overwatch competitor, you know, it's a hero shooter with abilities, and certainly you can point to some of the differences. Is that enough to drive people into the game? I don't know. Um, but... As an Overwatch competitor, in terms of just the market, like, wait, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of like the market, that's the end of the level, by the way. Yeah, Overwatch is popular and it's free. On top of that, I think most of the people who really like Overwatch are still playing Overwatch. Most of the people like me who got burnt out with Overwatch, I I'm done. There's two songs playing at the same time, by the way. So, uh, so sorry, sorry, Jarts, <laughs> gonna throw throw you off because uh, uh, suddenly we're in this level. That's right, we have two levels, just taken from episode one. Uh, there's some crowds. Some crowds, I guess. Hold on, let's see if we can blow them up. Hey! Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh! Hey! 
They're never gonna shut up, by the way. <laughs> the music as well. But yeah, notice how, like, okay, well, this is slightly different. Uh, this is just weird differences where I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the worst part is, like, while these levels are okay, they're also mostly based on, you know, the existing stuff. The next level onwards, so the remaining five that kick him quick. There you go. There you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, my bad. Maybe I could jump in there, but... Oh, really? I need a key card. Where's the key card? I love these uh, toys and jelly with signs as well. Um, I could probably figure out how to get up there. We need a yellow key card for both these doors. So where am I missing it? It's got the sign that says up, but this is not a lift. This is the air vent just extended down all the way. And there's definitely a guy up there. I'm not supposing that's... Like, that's what they want me to do. Is that? Like, jumping oh, on the sign? That seems a bit specific. You can't, you can't not port this room, right? I mean, it's probably just a Christmas Carol. I I don't personally know this one. We don't sing Christmas Carols that much in Australia. We all know Jingle Bells, and that's kind of it. Uh... Oh, there it is! There's our first new enemy. She just runs around and shoots at you sometimes. Uh, barely any health. Barely a joke. Actually, most of the new enemies in this expansion... We got new enemies, at least, but... Yeah, most of the new enemies are not particularly exemplary. There's more of them. I, they also drop prezzies, which you... Hold on, you run over them and the little thing comes out. These are some shotgunner types, but they die in one hit. Oh, that is exactly the weapon I wanted to swap to that very moment as well. Um, but yeah, what a what a bizarre you know, enemy roster. The feminist elven militia. Like what a who chose that? Who fixed this like side of the building just to let me blow it up again as well? That's the blue key card. Does he have time to play with himself? Don't have time to play I guess he doesn't. Myself. But he does have balls of steel. And that's broken, but we can hop down. Ooh. <laughs> I guess that's meant to open the other way, but yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, like, why, why would you buy Concord? And that's a bit of a hypothetical question. I think a lot of us will go, oh, you know, it makes sense why you wouldn't buy it. But like, like I think that's the point, is that like, Sony's job has been to market a game towards the potential buyers, and I've yet to really see a great compelling case for doing that, for, for, buy, for buying the game. And uh, in turn, that's led into these uh, recent reports, which go, oh, they put turrets in this level. Um, that's led to recent reports of basically the game flopping real, real hard. There's an article that came out where it's like, analysts speculate because it's all digital sales. Actually, they may have had physical sales, but um, that the sales count for this game after its first week is 25,000 units. Maybe about 10,000 on PC and 15,000 on the PlayStation. It's got crossplay, so it's not the worst being on different platforms, but certainly when it's on Steam, 30% of your money is that sound. What is that sound? What on earth? I assume that's the the movie. Oh. <laughs> Bit of an odd sound. I'm not gonna lie. We get the jetpack here, by the way, so we're ready to break every level going forward. I need the red key card from somewhere. So we'll we'll run around a bit. Yeah, it. I'm not like I'm not surprised that Concord flopped, um, but I'm surprised that it's this severity because 
When you think about it as well, 25,000 units of a game that sells for 40 US dollars means a million dollars of gross revenue. And that assumes absolutely no money goes towards any other party, retailers, um, you know, Steam themselves, who are going to take a 30% cut for the PC versions. Uh, I'm wandering around in circles. I am not finding that red key card. We have done laps around here. We've wandered into this back room, which expects me to have a red key card. Let's go. Uh, and yeah, yeah. It, eight, eight years, you are correct. That's the time span of the development from, from the reports, uh, which makes sense when you think about it. Eight years ago was when Overwatch came out. That would be the perfect time to start making an Overwatch competitor. But releasing at this point, it's like, man, you know, Overwatch died three, five years ago at least, or three years ago if you played it quite until the end. I sort of got a bit weary um, when Baptiste got added. I just didn't think that the new characters were really that much fun. Yeah, I had, yeah, okay, I don't know where this room opened, but sure. We got the key card. I don't know what that switch did. Who knows? Let's activate that key card and get out of here. Uh, to the movie theater. Oh, maybe it closed the movie theater room? Wherever we're going. This way, yeah, yeah. No, it did close the movie theater. It's funny, I said I had a similar situation about six months ago with Skull and Bones. I, I don't know the sales figures for Skull and Bones off the top of my head, but part of me also does feel Wow! I didn't realize you could just soft lock your way in the level. Oh no, never mind. Okay. <laughs> I thought that door closed on me. I was like, oh boy. Yeah, why is that? Oh, that's probably why the switch didn't activate because it's waiting for that to finish. Oh my gosh. Why are they? Why are they powering the same? The same part? What's going on there? So when you activate that, uh, where can we go? I think that changes that to suddenly go up, yeah. So now this becomes a lift. Oh, and they also expect you to use a jetpack. I mean, that's okay. And that's the end of the level. So. Rockin', rockin'. Land of the Forgotten Toys. So we are suddenly in new levels, and you're gonna sort of feel a bit of a... Um, bit of a custom level kind of vibe. Never mind also the music. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell, rock. This song A may be copyrighted. <laughs> jingle bell rock is not that old, is it? It's not public domain. Could they get away with this? Yeah, it's, it's from the 50s. It's not that old. It's like Elvis music isn't public domain yet. Like, you got songs from, like, the 1910s becoming public domain, like, um, uh, like, the, the Firebird Suite, like, that kind of era. Uh. Oh, level design. <laughs> also, is this a bit non-Euclidean? A little bit. It's okay. Uh, this is a, oh, this is a weird one. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday is a notorious one. Yeah. I like, so I like how these are like the, I don't know the names of the enemies, I do people I apologize, but like those are definitely reskins, but they make you shoot the little thrust, uh, shots instead of rockets, which makes it a lot easier for me. Um, but yeah, like, it, it seems, oh my gosh, by the way. Hit the button, hit the button. That wasn't good, that wasn't good. There we go, we got it, we got it, we're good. You can see they're not too bad though, they're just sort of... Speaking of games that took a long time to come out but weren't fully cooked, do nuke them forever! <laughs> about the project from the yeah yeah the the duke duke nukem forever is such an interesting story and i th actually think it's very fitting to play oh my gosh by the way uh to play duke nukem given that that's the that's the story of that game so for reference yeah duke nukem forever was the uh hypothetical sequel to this game so this game came out in 96 
Um, I assume they sort of didn't start development until maybe 98, was sort of when they were starting it. Um, but at that time, if your game took two years, it started to feel like, hmm, it's a bit of time, a bit of time we're waiting on. Um, three years starts to feel like, oh, you know, is everything alright? And then comes the wonderful 2001 Duke Nukem Forever trailer. Um, shows Duke busting out of a Las Vegas casino, saving the world, that kind of, that kind of stuff. It's cool stuff. And uh, then Duke Nukem Forever didn't show up in 2002 or 2003 or 2004 and so on until about 2010 when 3D Realms just bit the dust. They were like, we're dead. And then uh, Gearbox sort of bought them out. They were like, hey, you know, we can help you out and we'll finish Duke Nukem Forever for you. Uh, I assume there's some more technical stuff going on there. Obviously, Randy is the founder of Gearbox, which would have happened in like 98 or 97, so shortly after this game came out. Um, I, I know Randy in particular because he was the level designer on episode 4 in this game, so that's, that's why uh, he's of note all the time. Um, this is, by the way, trash level design because every time you go down one of these pipes, you take damage on the way down. And then you can see, I've just, like, sometimes you're in the same room, sometimes you go into the next room. Like, you just gotta, like, keep, like, noting where you're going. Um, but the main way this level works is that that door that we saw that needed the key, there's three doors back to back. And there's three paths, and there's a door for, sorry, for each key card, so. If you got also, um... You know, blue Mario sprite, why not? It may not necessarily be Mario, because you can never face him or kick him. But he's definitely playing a kart racer, and he's a plumber. It even says, does it say anywhere? I mean, the worst pipes everywhere. Mario make it to, yeah, yeah. Um, all that for the blue key card, by the way. That's, that's why we've done this. The, me the mediocre Linguini land. That's where we went, by the way. Just want to note. Uh, there's also a portal here, just cash. Um, mm, mm. <laughs> Did anyone see the recent, like, video as well of the, um, the, the stable diffusion-based, um, neural net that's basically hallucinating playing Doom based on inputs? So as in the, the, like, it's a, bunch of, it's a deep mind project, so you can't run it yourself just yet. But they basically trained it off a lot of, like, simulated Doom data. And, um, effectively now, the AI can go, okay, well, I'm looking at this. If someone hits right, I should do this. And so on. And it, it's got a little bit of temporal information just to get some of its aspects right. Um, it's got some faults, particularly, uh, it doesn't have any state. It's entirely based on just the past few images, and so that means that it it's a bit trickier. Oh, nice, by the way. Um, it's a bit trickier to... Oh, actually, yeah, it's like, hold on, it's on the third level. Um, it's a bit trickier to get, yeah, the, the ammo working quite right, but it's surprisingly good at, like, when you shoot, the ammo counter goes down. It's also terrible at this exact staircase, because this is one of the few moments in the training data where the player moves vertically. And uh, it doesn't quite pick up on that quite well, so... We can't go anywhere beyond this part, by the way. You know, you could do the whole first two level if you really want to. But, you know, it's an exercise at that point, who knows, who wants that? So they just went, hey, you know, leave it at that. Hail to the king, baby! Anyway, back to the portal, I guess. And we head down here. Have a bit of a... Get smart doors going on. Except we did that in the in the last expansion already. This open area. Oh yes, you, you're gonna notice some of these uh, green elves with the hats are also gonna shoot shrink rays, and that gets very annoying as well. Um, this guy can't figure out the <laughs> the bridge. Where's that confounded bridge? I can, my renderer apparently. Ooh, ooh, I'm on him. I'm on him. Oh, he's in it. That's why. Yeah. But the, the Google DeepMind thing is very, very fascinating. I actually, not, 
I, it's not the future of gaming, if anyone says that. It's just like, it's a very, very neat curiosity, but also one where the volume of the game slightly overpowers your voice. I'll, I'll speak a bit closer. I'll do some mixing in pose as well. Because <laughs> um, sometimes I turn away, sometimes I'm like facing over here, and now it's like I'm very quiet, so I'm going to try my best to look a bit straight, make sure I'm talking right into my mic. If I had like a headset mic, I feel like it'd be a little bit more consistent. What is going on down here, by the way? I'm really curious. Come on, guys. Come on. What is this? Because there's no- that should have killed me. Actually, is there a way to even like get back up without the jetpack? <laughs> I don't think there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least I can guarantee that- Oh, I don't know. Turn around. Every now and then I feel a bit... I forgot the song, how it goes, but you know, you know where you're going with that. It's kind of weird, it's like they've got like a window here. They've actually thought about the aesthetic of the level for once. And then, uh... Got this weird little sewer bit where I proceed to get shot a ton in the butt. It, yeah, it's a bit like, yep, yeah, okay, sure. It's like they were just waiting for me or something. Um, but yeah, no, check out the, um, that, that Doom in Stable Diffusion, like, kind of demo. It's really cool. It's really, really neat what they've done. Um, because definitely, like, if you think about it, you know, this is... I, I'd say very broadly, but it's like, your brain is doing this when you dream about playing a video game. This is a very weird kind of ending to the level as well. It reminds me of a Tomb Raider 3 section. But I swim down and through a hole and then swim up and then immediately end the level. Okay, sure. Gonna rip him a new one. Gonna rip him a new one. Santa's corporate HQ. We have enemies already facing us. Now the music won't overpower me. Because it's different music. I wonder why the AI thinks they can shoot through the door there, but... Uh, this level's a bit of a backtracky one, but none of these levels are that large. Not the Smithsonian Museum large, just at least. I don't think the next expansion is like that bad as well. It's pretty, pretty tame. Um, yeah, a lot, since a lot of these enemies are like quite weak, it's like, oh, you know, just go through it. You know, just single shotgun blast these enemies, pop them off. Sometimes two if you weird miss like that. A bit hard to aim at, but I, I, I love the um, the regular enemies with the antlers though. This is fun. Um, but yeah, check that out. Uh, do I have anything else to say about Concord? Um, there was a, it's called Nuclear Winter, but December is just one of four months with winter in it. Or I guess three months, right? The seasons are three months. I say this knowing full well it's gotten incredibly hot in Sydney over the past few weeks, except today, it's been very, very windy. So, stay safe if you got the wind around you. I feel like out of all the things I could potentially play around Christmas time that are like snow themed, this is like the actual Christmas themed like bit of content and here I am like not even dedicating a whole stream to it, I'm just like, nah, I'm doing two expansions. Polar opposites in terms of uh, weather dynamics as well. There's a lot of doors that are just closed until some switch later on opens them as well, which really throws you off. Yeah, it's not even winter. We're getting like wonderful 27 degree days now. Uh, right on the cusp of, eh, it's about to get too stinking hot, but, like, I've been going, you know, like, heater off for the past few days. Uh... Oh, come on, what? Could've made a noise or something, you know? I'm not too sure if that's just the one switch that activates it. You can see the unlocked and locked. I'll just leave it at that, I guess. Um... But yeah, is there anything else about Concord I need to say? Um, yeah, there was one, uh, I think it was from PC Gamer. 
uh, the article in, in question, I've forgotten off the top of my head, but it was basically going like gamers are too eager to absolutely like trash on, you know, games they've never played. In particular regard to, uh, here spring starts on March 21st, rather March 1st, it exists. Yeah. Um, but uh, in particular mention to Concord, um, because it uses a screenshot from the game, I think it's particularly talking about it. Um, it's just an op-ed article, it's nothing like, you know, it's not like the opinion of the website. I don't know what's going on here, by the way, we've got the, the green filter. And some wonderful force fields everywhere. This is such a weird, like, design here, because it's like, it's all force fields all the way down, including at the end. Why you got force, like, why you got a force field on this wall? It's already a wall. also open all these windows so you can jump through and I believe that also act no yes it activates opening this up Come get which lets you see that Duke Nukem has uh, invaded Los Angeles Dallas um, Miami and Chicago I don't know if Concord is actually like mechanically bad yeah well yeah that's that I guess is another thing as well because this article is talking about how people are trashing the game, but, like, from everything I've seen, apart from, like, some people on my timeline, you know, will make note of the... the... pronouns and the, um... Also, what a... what a... what a thing. There's pronouns on the, um... on the character select screen. I'm like, that's... People will always pick on that kind of stuff. Because, you know, it's... It's... it's charged. It's like, you know, that's the kind of thing they'll jump on. Other than that, it's, I don't see anyone really saying it's a bad game or that the yeah i yeah exactly i'm like it's inconsequential to me at the end of the day so i don't i don't care but like to me it's like i follow the kind of people who would jump on that kind of stuff there's like like there's a lot of people i know who would talk about it but other than that ages ago it's not like anyone thinks the game is like mechanically weak or that it's like um you know not doing what it should it's just like it's it's just a shooter like that's it and so if i wanted to play overwatch well i'll just play overwatch and if i want to play a free-to-play overwatch i'll just play paladins or uh you know what what's some other ones people say valorant valorant i guess is an alternative because it is it is a bit esports focused i think there's that which makes it actually not as much a fit for the people who like overwatch well maybe some people do um over yeah overwatch is free to play as well sorry yeah, i keep forgetting <laughs> I'm a little salty about it. I paid money for that. That was a cool double kill. Um, but yeah, exactly, exactly. For people on PS5, and this is another problem as well with the PS5 and that kind of console, this console gen, there's no, you have to spot by the way that there's a crack on this one, one fence. And it's a little temperamental because if the thing goes behind it or in front of it, it doesn't hit it. You know? um, one game, yeah, well, I mean, people meme about that on the PS5, but the other actual problem about the PS5's catalog is that it's a console generation that is competing incredibly hard with existing games. I don't think the PS5, even to this day, has convinced people that it's visually that much more impressive than the PS4. A lot of people have a PS4, and you're trying to... Con and not saying the console isn't selling, but more... Why release a game if it could also work on the PS4? And a lot of people could just buy PS4 games that are also pretty alright right now. PS4 is sunsetting way slower. Exactly. Like, I know some people mentioned, like, the PS2 had a long sunset. But also on the PS2, I think it was more the PS2 just had a very wonderful, like, budget market. A lot of people would still buy... I'm hearing a guy. I don't know where he's gone. I've completely forgotten where that red key card goes. I keep thinking it was around here. I'll just double check. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's reminding me exactly where I need to go. Ooh. Yeah, piece of cake. Not to the waterfall. Yeah, the PS2 was popular over there as well. But even even afterwards, I feel like the PS2 got a lot of a, a lot of love. Um, and I think it's just like I still don't think it. Yeah, sorry, this little no, not this tiny door. Hold on, we'll see it on the map. There we go. Yeah, you, you see what I mean? It's like, oh my gosh, like... Up there. Could be using the jetpack, but like, that! It's like, that's the door! 
Um, yeah, the Genesis is, is popular over, over in some countries as well, like Brazil. Groovy. Brazil was popular in the news for two things, both Twitter. I'm going to mention the more positive one, the Brazilian Miku. Thank you, Brazilian Miku, for blessing our timelines. Yeah, yeah, the internet presence is the, uh, <laughs> is the negative one. Uh, for reference, uh, people as well, I guess, if you are watching this, I don't post stuff on Twitter, I post stuff on the Fediverse. Uh, no one is gonna put in the time and effort to geo-block that, <laughs> I tell ya. Uh, this is the end of the level, by the way, you just kinda jump out of the building. That's- this is the reason why I'm on the Fediverse as well, because I- not that I don't trust Twitter, I don't trust a site I don't run. If- if my Fetty goes down, that's mostly because of me. Uh, the music is loud again. The music, it doesn't work! Oh, now it does work. It'll- it'll figure itself out. It'll get there. <laughs> it's that, a uh, famous, uh, Brazilian Miku was based on an earlier Brazilian Miku. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Uh, this is a cursed level design, by the way. The fact that you're facing this, like, hole here. If you go out here, first of all, enemies. who are just chillin'. And two, absolutely no way to get back up. That ledge, way too high. So, instead, we go through the back door, which contains a crack in the hole in the floor. Also, this. Come they really up. like their trip mines, don't they? Um, but yeah, I, it's a bit politically charged, the uh, actual reasons why uh, Twitter is banned in Brazil. But yeah, I, I would I would just mention that, uh, yeah, you know, if your content creators are available on things like the Fediverse, you'll be pretty safe to follow them there. Um, and if you're not on the Fediverse, uh, please, uh, you know, consider it as an alternative place that you check the memes and stuff like that. I get a lot of my good memes from there. There's a lot of funny fellas on there. We haven't seen the Octo Brains at all. Right? I've seen a few uh, Italian Mikus and even a Cal... The best one I saw... Oh, actually, no, not, not the best one, because there's a lot of good ones, but I saw a Brazilian Miku as in... Who's the who's the guy from um, Metal Gear Rising? Who is Brazilian? <laughs> Just like dressed as that. Um, level design, by the way. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Up, down, up. Oh, it's still, it's still going. It's still there. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Come get me. This is a fun area because that is a wall. There's a wall right here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fun ones. Um, Twitter is a, is a neat place when you get these kind of like fun trends. People catch on to a fun trend like that. Um, hello there, person. How you doing? Just drinking a blue bottle. Sure. Um, it's just just mean. Kind of trip line everywhere. Um, and that's, that's what I like about the Fetty as well. People catch on on the Fetty pretty well as well. And that one's all organic. It's just people seeing newest trends and... Oh my goodness, why? I don't like this. The problem with Twitter is that uh, it's the most popular uh, art site, even if it's not an art site, and this sucks as an art site. Yeah, yeah. You're getting competitive... You're getting some competitors showing up, and that's all good, but... I think ultimately... People are gonna make art on whatever platform, and... Unfortunately, people are just going to have to consume what's on that platform. I don't think anyone's really going to be happy with one singular platform having all the content for anything, really. In the same way that I do wish there was a nice YouTube competitor. Um, I say knowing I'm a YouTube partner, but you know what I mean? It's like, I want there to be a bout so that, you know, we can actually go, Oh, why is YouTube, like, really good instead of them just blocking ad blockers and... Oh my goodness, please! Why? <laughs> Look at this. this Level design, I swear. I swear. I did the trip mine itself go off. Oh, it went off because this guy's on the other side of the hole. I was like, it didn't go off on the key card, did it? Ooh. 
I hope you're liking the level design here. It's just, you know. It's, it's, it's not half bad, but it's like. Eh. It's okay. And the music just being, like, that loud. Oh my gosh. Remember when Twitch said, uh, you stream first on Twitch, you can't stream on Twitch at all? Uh, Twitch themselves, if you are a Twitch partner, you're not allowed, you were not allowed to do a stream on, you were, sorry, not, sorry, not a, not a stream. Um, oh my god, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you were not allowed to rebroadcast your stream on YouTube or any other site until at least 24 hours after it. That was a Twitch partner agreement for a long time until quite recently. Um, so that's been nicely reversed, which I like because Twitch, you know, for, for all of them, you know, for all these platforms, they do facilitate your streaming and stuff like that. And I appreciate them for that. They don't make your content. And I feel like it's just very, very like, guys, don't take credit for the stuff that I make, like that kind of stuff. I'm using it as like a, like a publisher. So you should, you should just be generally, you know, like going, oh, yeah. what, is, what is Twitch like today kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I keep yeah, getting mildly distracted from the console topic, but I think that's kind of it. You have, uh, sacrificed our rights to our three Yeah, oh, exactly. That one story, I think I've, I don't know if I mentioned on the previous stream, but like the recent story of, uh, the, the man's wife who died at Disneyland and, uh, like, Disney tried to make the case of arbitration because he, um, he had registered a free account on Disney Plus and Disney Plus said they're not responsible for damages to, like, rel Disney-related products, which includes Disneyland. I'm like, what? What? You are kidding, Disney. No way. I like how these enemies don't swim. But it's... That's a real story, by the way. That that's actually really happened. And I'm like, if that was like an automatic response, I wouldn't accept that. But I'd totally go, hey, at least I can understand why that somehow got published. But the fact that no, I think a real lawyer. Come get some. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, like a like a uh, a man's wife died because of like a peanut allergy at Disneyland, and. Disney made the argument that because he signed an arbitration clause in his Disney Plus free subscription, he, uh, he therefore waived his right to <laughs> complain about Disneyland. And I'm like, his wife died, what are you guys on about? Oh, we're nearly at the end. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's the most unhinged story. I'm s I'm so surprised. They're like... It's not just like, you know, a, the Onion article. I like how this level ends in not only a swimming pool with the ceiling, but also the actual, like, button. Also, do you like how that was level 5 out of 7? We are at level 6. The second last level. Christmas Village. It's not how you say village, but okay. And yeah, there's no secret levels. It's like, you're basically seeing the whole level. Got that jingle bells theme again. Village village. Oh, let's see if we can get this dude. It's so weird that they've got a button on their backs. Hi, hi. There you go. And then I stood right on that explosive. The lighting is different on, like, this snowman as opposed to the one that pops out afterwards as well. Hi. Hi, yes. It, it looks so awkward. I'm just mashing E on them. That's... <laughs> that's why it's so weird looking. Okay, so we've got a bunch of, like, key doors and stuff like that and windows that you can shoot through. Lots of mail. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, just to, just to finish up the point on Concord, like, I, yeah, I legitimately think that most of my timeline, if they had something to complain about about the game, I don't think they've really been finding it. And I, partially because I don't think anyone's playing the game, so that always, you know, it's a little bit. But other than that, people are just saying, it's just not a game for people to, like, 
why? As in, why would you buy it? What's going on there? And this is a really curious case where... It'd be funny if you're touching the metal bags getting many... Oh, yeah, this is... Case in point, by the way. Look, look at that, like, what do you... What do you... What do you do? What do you, what do, you do with that? It's very annoying as well, because they do chase you out quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, like... It's been very interesting because no one should really be doing like PR damage for, for um, uh, what's the game called again? Concord. No one should be like, you know, it's like, it's a game, no one's playing it, but no one hates it? Some people are saying it's mid. The reviews aren't particularly glowing, but it's like, it's inoffensive in the sense of it just exists. Um, and to me, that's like, you know, the death knell of the game. You have absolutely nothing really setting you apart and going for you. But, like, I don't know why it exists out of 10. That is true. It, it, it indeed runs on my computer. I think. Maybe. I didn't... Here's a fun one. Is more more people played the, uh, the beta than actually have bought the game. Which, that's... I mean, that's usually... That, that's not unexpected, but it's just a... You know, they've run the playbooks, they've done the, the, the trailers, and the developer talks, and the, the demos, and the, and the beta, and, and all that. They've gone through the motions. It ticks the boxes for a game that people at some point in time would have bought. But they've just completely missed when, and who, and perhaps a bit of the what. Like, they just don't know, like, what people are into nowadays. Now, I can't explain why people are interested in some games, but I can definitely tell you why people are not interested in this one. And it's just, yeah, it's like... Why do I want to play Overwatch again? Or pay money for Overwatch again? It's also not part of a subscription service. I think a lot of people may be potentially spoiled um, by the Xbox Game Pass, which is great if you, you know, you leverage it and you don't care about ownership of games. But for the people who probably do want, like, a bit of a deal on playing, uh, live service games... Oh, yeah, well... Yeah, live service games are a can of worms. A lot of people are trying it. Not a lot of games succeed. Uh, the Suicide Squad game uh, at the beginning of the year is a big example of why. Please don't. Not saying that game flopped as bad as well, but it's more that like you, your expectation of it lasts a long time. By the way, I like how this guy spawns in. Like just another one. I've already killed almost all the enemies as well. This is a this is chaos. Normal games, uh, most people can handle multiple in like a month. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I play through tons of games. Like I, I'm, I'm getting into a good habit of having at least one or sometimes even two reviews on backlogged every week. Uh, I only had one this week. I only played through Kingsfield in its entirety um, because Gran Turismo 3 has uh, taken my attention again. Sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's like games end, and also if your game is good, people will play it multiple times. That's always a fun one. Uh, or potentially, buy it later. You know how many people continue to buy... Do you like how these enemies just swarm behind you, by the way? Two of them. They don't deal that much damage, but it's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. And that's just because I opened the door. Like, they just spawn all the way back at the start. Why? Why are they like this? Um, but like, there's tons of older games that a lot of people will just continue buying. Even though, like, they're not getting any remasters and they're not getting anything. Like, Spec Ops The Lion is a classic example. It's just had perpetual ongoing sales. Uh, Factorio is a brilliant game. I always note that one. Um, what's, a, what's another, like, really good example? The Lion. Oh, it did get delisted. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think it's because it's got some licensed songs on some parts, which explains, but never justifies in my mind. It's like, oh, come on, guys. I get why the license doesn't Go last forever. Down. Why do people not negotiate for a license that lasts for this, for, you know, for the product? So you can sell the product forever. It's a bear. It's just a bear here. I know, I know. Hi there. All my homies wonder where... Did, wait, hold on, they gave me an extra key card, didn't they? Yeah, they give you an extra key card in this level for no reason. 
just inexplicable extra feedback. Don't need it. Which makes me wonder if they... Did they even play test this game? But that is true. That is true. And that's the end of the level. What a weird exit as well. Uh, so congrats, fellas. We're at the last level of the expansion. Here comes Santa Claus. Uh, that is the thing. Imagine paying money for this. So we got a bit of enemy spam off the bat. I haven't... I, by the way, I like how I've been using the shotgun the entire time. Because they've not been doing, like, mini-bosses or other kinds of real threatening enemies. It's just been... I'm in a Zelda militia that has barely any health. Is is is, the, is that making a statement or is it? Uh, why why can I not walk into the end as well? Is that making a statement or is that just like what they want to do? I don't know. Um, so all the comments on you know like because Randy himself said that like oh you know some of the content in these expansions wouldn't fly by today's standards. Legit. Is is anyone like? Having having an ants about like old Duke Nukem content. This is just like you know, it, it, it's, it's fine that like <laughs> like that's all right. Speaking of Duke, are you hyped for DOS RA support? I'm hyped. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, obviously, uh, you know the quality of the retro achievements um, rollout relies on the quality of the set. So as long as people pick. Uh, a, a good, interesting variety of games, and they do real fun sets, uh, oh. you know, correspond with it, I think it'll be set. Um, there's gonna be a lot of real interesting ones, especially around, like, Doom and Duke Nukem, because you can do custom content very, very easily. So, I think you're probably gonna see a lot of people just keep making Duke Nukem 3D and, uh, and, uh, Doom mod kinds of expansions, and that's fine, that's all fun. Uh, but I personally would love to do a Realms of the Haunting, um, wink wink, nudge nudge, uh, Halloween Halloween. Um, I think that would be an absolute vibe of a game to have. Uh, by the way, uh, jetpack moment. But like, DOS is a, you know, there's tons of things on DOS. So I'm glad that like, one, DOS box is so ubiquitous and robust. Noctis. I think I've heard of Noctis before, actually. I've probably got some actual, like, incredibly obscure ones. Harvester is also one. I wouldn't want to develop a set for it, because I don't know it as much, but Harvester is one that, you know, I absolutely love. And it's fun as well. I mentioned Spec Ops The Line, but I had a mate who um, really loves to get into, like, game worlds. And it's just like, you know, I, like, I feel bad for killing, you know, people if it's like... You know, it's a world they care about, and uh, part of me is like, ooh, I wonder how my mate would love Harvester, because Harvester, Harvester is uh, definitely a cult classic, yes. But like, I would love to know the reaction to Harvester, because it's just like, that game tries to get you to not care, and if you care, it laughs at you for doing so. It's like, it's like, oh. And it's part of the plot as well. It's a proper, like, plot point. So it's it's such a it's such a very very unique and standout game. It's a trauma. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So it's completely like up my alley. And I've not played a game that's like so absurdly like bold. It's it's very rushed. It's very oh hi there. Um, it's definitely got its like quirks. Um, I think the whole like disc 3 section is an absolute enigma. I, I, I can't, like, I can't describe, like, what is happening in that disc 3, but I can tell you, um, you know, it's such a treat. If you haven't played Harvester, it's, like, real cheap on Steam, so I highly would recommend. Um, maybe one day on stream, but since it is a bit of a point-and-click adventure game, uh, Delve Deeper in Land, there's probably a bunch of good ones. I don't know very many of them, but, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so here we go. This is the whole crux of the. You have found my secret plans. Now you must die. 
<laughs> uh, so once you have stepped on that, out comes Santa Claus. There he is. He's gonna come at you with a shotgun. Oh, it's not nice to shoot Santa. I'm gonna try and get. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, right there. Ah, oh, done. I was doing so well. I was doing so well. Um, there are a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of DOS variants. Um, because, yeah, DOSBox itself, it's like, it tries to run MS-DOS, you know. I wonder if it's nice to shoot Santa. Hi, did he just get stuck in the wall? Pathfinding can't figure out the level. Ugh. Hi there, hi there. Oh, it's not nice to shoot Santa. <laughs> oh, my face. That was it. So Duke Nukem rescued Santa and saved it. Rescued. Rescued. Merry Christmas, children, and season's great. That was it, by the way. So it's the night before Christmas and up at the pole, all the monsters were bleeding from out of their holes and Santa proclaimed as he rode out of sight, Duke Nukem kicks ass and to all a good night. Merry Christmas. And that's it, yes. 56 minutes that took me to beat that whole expansion. That was, that's on the hardest difficulty as well. There's no secret exits, there's no nothing. Now I'm not expecting a, a miracle. But it's so incredibly short. It's like... Barely everything, barely anything to, like, talk about. And, you know, the levels aren't really amazing. The enemies are very odd. The music's a bit odd. I, I appreciate, you know, the theming. It's fun. It's, you know, sure, okay. But it's like, man... People paid money for this. People paid money for this, so... Well, let's do a quick jump over. And I'll get, I'll get the audio working first go again, so... Let's do a quick jump over. Oh, I have the Gran Turismo 4 music playing. Can you tell I love Gran Turismo? And we'll jump on over to... Here we go, here we go, here we go. Unfortunately, we don't have an intro on this one. This is just a... But we do have the music. This is Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition. That's right, we only got the right logo on one of them. <laughs> a, a good MIDI jam is great. So this is uh, replacing Episode 2 again. Uh, or Episode 3 rather, because we have some deathmatch maps for some Time reason. To crash this party. I like how you actually have deathmatch maps just launchable. There's some interesting ones in the deathmatch category as well, but uh, spoilers, uh, yes, we have reskins for all the weapons, and generally a lot of new John St. John voice lines. Very, very nice. I, I feel like he wants to crash this party. So, you could play, you could play, uh, some deathmatch maps. How many deathmatch maps do we have? Four of them, very nice. And we do have a secret level, so what is that? We have... Seven levels and a secret level. So it's a bit smaller, it's still not tons of content, but... Time to crash this party. They've put in the effort to really, like, give this one a different vibe, so... And the music's a jam, so I'm gonna see if I can turn it up without without it feeling like it's too loud. I love these waves. I love it, like, Juke just comes in from the shore. Let's go surfing up. Everybody's learning how. Come on, it's a party with me. <laughs> this is Time incredible. So, Duke, Duke Life's a Beach is uh, the final of the expansions. It fully goes in with the reskin, and it's kind of spectacular. Um, <laughs> you have such a big muscle. It's quite spectacular. So all of your weapons are, well, your standard ones are water pistols. Uh, the music's definitely in, in the vibe, and they've gone through a lot of great effort to make sure that the levels... Hey, watch where you point that you have the levels feel a bit different. Oh. Hi there. <laughs> it's just like, eh, just getting with the super soaker. 
when he talks. <laughs> oh, he, he does sound like he's looking for his pet frog. You're gonna get tired of his women not talking about Duke's muscles, I'll tell you that. Um, you just grab bananas and sunscreen. That's your health and, and armor. Bananas and sunscreen. Pineapples are your pipe bombs. Seems, uh, seems like the summer vacation got better level design. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, this is by the same people who did the, um, the Duke It Out in DC expansion. And I think they definitely have a lot of love for their level design. I appreciate that they've put in the effort to really do a different theme and sort of give it that total conversion. Oh, I triggered a lift from this angle, okay. Um... They've really given it that, that wonderful total conversion kind of theme. I like how you can actually see where you're where you're activating. Wherever that yellow key card is hiding. But yeah, no, I this one, it's it's a vibe. I'm glad that we get to and anyway, what's going on there. We'll see later, but also uh, the key cards are actually like Credit cards. You have such a big very, very nice. Mm. You've got such a big I mean, they're not that bad. I've actually, I actually tried playing the um the mm. PS1 you release of Duke Nukem 3D called, uh, what is it? Is it Total Meltdown? Was that the name of it? Um, and uh, just incredible, guys. Incredible. Um, and uh. What I'm surprised about about the PS1 version, this one looks pretty good. Yeah, this one, this one's real, real fun. I'm there's a little bit of part of me that's like a bit sad that like there's no um, like port of these on consoles. The only releases of these expansions was uh, you'd buy them at the time. They got bundled in uh, the like 3D Realms anthology and the Duke Nukem Megaton edition that Devolver released. Um, and then for some reason, the current Duke Nukem 20th Anniversary. <laughs> this doesn't fly with modern audiences. It's like, bruh, this is fun Duke Nukem levels. Uh, but, yeah, the, um, the PS1 version, one thing I was surprised about is that that version is remarkably faithful. I was expecting, because a lot of Doom ports have, like, cut content, missing levels, simplified levels. It's got a lot of, you know, corners cut to Time make to it work. Duke, Duke Nukem on the PS1 is all the levels, at, at least the first three episodes, because it's not the Atomic Edition. Um, but it's like, it is the first three levels. Oh my gosh, hello. Um, now the only problem is that it is the first three episodes. Uh, warts and all, and also, it attempts to run all of it. This is a new enemy, by the way. <laughs> also, you missed these guys from the, uh... From the other expansion? They were just never there. Alright, what did I just activate out here? Just got bit by Seagull? Hold on, bite me again, steal me chip again! Never mind. <laughs> Fridge surprise. Fridge moment, yeah. Oh boy, can you tell where this is about to go? Hey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, come on guys, come on! <laughs> no. <laughs> they didn't anticipate just being able to jump over that wall. Hey, what were you pointing at? There's been other secrets in Duke Nukem 3D that say you're not supposed to be here at that. Uh, that would have been the perfect opportunity for one of those. Lots of blood matters. And uh, this. Oh. Coconut launcher ammo. Okay. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, now the I haven't yet gotten up to the PS1 version has an exclusive fourth, uh, fourth episode. The uh, 
creators of the port made a six. Oh, mirror every time. They made a six episode or six level episode uh, as the episode four, and it does have some unique content that um, I hear is pretty interesting to check out. If he shoots ya, it's gonna hurt. That is true. That one would be a good jam to play at some point. Um, but I haven't gone up to that uh, expansion, so I can't tell you, or to that fourth episode, so I can't tell you yet. But I can definitely tell you the game is horrendous frame rate wise. It is actually dreadful. It gets very hard to play. Uh, pro tip if you're ever playing on an emulator, overclock the emulator. Just let the PlayStation itself try to run a lot faster. These lights are kind of cool, actually. Damn. I hate disco. Staying alive. Hey, staying alive. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Born to be hey, Very nice. So, look at that. We got the Ice Crusher. What is this? This is a... Uh... Okay. <laughs> Wasn't me. Um, it's like the, it's like the, the Devastator, but, uh... Bounces off walls. Very fun, very nice. Am I meant to get a key card here? There we go, yeah. I'll take what's behind door number one. Which okay. Oh, I, I get it. Yeah, the... This is kind of fun. I, I like this. Even if this may just be reusing textures from the Balls of Steel uh, pinball game apart. Uh, oops. Did I just completely miss it, or...? Are they not coming around here? Yeah, yeah, come on. Ah. There we go, finally. <laughs> I figured it out. I watched it long enough, I was like, hello. I love the sunnies they got going on, so... Uh... So let's talk about, uh, fun... Uh... Other politics, uh, in the world, which is, uh... The oldie Gamergate. It's had its 10-year anniversary, and, uh... I think the biggest take-homes... Is that... It means different things to different people. And that's what, that always makes it as a topic kind of tricky to talk about, especially because like a lot of people are going to like say one thing. Um, I alluded to a couple of streams ago the 10th anniversary of the, the Zoe post, which is what I consider to be the start of the, the whole fiasco. Um, but certainly the reaction to uh, the Zoe post and certain accusations uh, filed towards um, particularly uh, certain journalists at uh, Kotaku at the time that was what really sort of spurred it on for me. And it's not necessarily that, uh, for me, it's like, oh, this is a deal broker, I'll never read Kotaku. Because I didn't exactly read a lot of games journalists at the time, but I didn't, like, treat it as, like, oh, you know, like, this is my idol and now it's ruined, but more that, like, oh, really? People, like, have that kind of collusion? It makes sense, but, like, man, you know, I wish people were a little a little better than that um now obviously it's like a real minor scenario like at the end of the day it's like he wrote a couple of words that did positively depict uh, a certain you know a person's game who he was sleeping with the developer like on the surface we can all say hey a bit of transparency on that one or a bit of journalistic integrity and just kind of letting someone else write that would be all right um also, I would hot probably... Tub, hot babe. I am home. Okay, he is home. Um, one could make the case of, uh, the, you know, he should, uh, recuse himself from writing that kind of article, even if it is all you're doing is you're writing... Oh my god. Even if all you're doing is you're writing a small, uh, write-up about, uh, what Steam Greenlight games came out that one week. This could have gone better. Mm. 
There we go. I saved some of them. It's okay. Ugh. What <laughs> a deeper voice. Hey, what were you point that At least these are non-trivial levels, though. They, they've got a fair bit of content and, and stuff to them. Oh, like we're back here, for example. I'm probably gonna want a key card. Like, there's a reason why I'm out here. Diving board. Cool. Hi. <laughs> it's just coming at me. Uh. So we wandered around here. There's got to be something around here. Right? I'm not going nuts. I don't think I activate. Ah, there we go. I was like, it's got to be a switch or something. That's probably a bit of love for something. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how that went. Um, then eventually came a bit of a collusion going on where uh, there were... A bunch of simultaneous articles talking about how gamers were dead and uh, that was sort of the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't think a lot of people particularly cared about the, you know, the, the, the Zoe Quinn stuff. It's like, ah, oh, it's a bit like, you know, hey, this journalist did a thing in this game that I, I think most people wouldn't really care about playing. Um, you know, it's like, there's a bit of like weird positive press going on. Um, small scale, but definitely a problem. People then reacted strongly and basically try to decry the critics. And that is where, I guess, the whole gate scenario comes from. This whole, like, you know, uh, people are trying to, like, say this one, uh, you know, this one opinion. It's being depicted as something else and sort of silenced out. Um, that's where the big kind of hubbub came about. And for me, personally, that's where I started to go, okay, like, what is happening here? I... And, uh, yeah, it turns out that, uh, like... Not that, it's not that these journalists colluded with each other, but a lot of them are part of a common group, uh, like a like a just a chat group. But uh, it allows them to communicate and coordinate certain things, uh, which shouldn't be articles, but it ended up being articles. Wow, I'm just wandering around in circles. I had that red key card like spot over here. That was a yellow key card. We've done. Okay, I'm getting a real turn around now. <laughs> oh boy. Um, but yeah, for me, I, that just felt like, okay, there's something odd going on. And Again, I feel like these people should do better. There's obviously going to be very, very objective kinds of things. Journalists are always going to break that kind of story, but... I started to see a bit more of the, like, they're going for... Um, oh, I don't want to say sensationalism, but like... These opinions didn't represent me. Like, the article's talking about how gamers as an identity is dead. I'm like, what? What? I don't know, gaming's cool. In fact, it's ever more mainstream. We have more and more people, you know, growing up, going into work, uh, and it's like, yeah, you know, like, I play games. That's a, that's an opinion a bunch of people will have. And that's fine and cool, and we should celebrate that, right? But no, the identity of gamers is in question, or something like that, and kind of, this uh, fan is very cool, by the way. I'm glad they've got that, but uh, unfortunately, I am getting turned around and we are in level one. So I better figure this out soon. If I had to, like, decipher the level design, I'd definitely go, we've got the, like, the, oh my gosh. Where was the, um, I know it was down there, I'm just trying to remember the other half of this. Yeah, it was this lift. Because we needed the blue key to get into the bar, we need the yellow key to get even up to this floor, we need the red key to get in here. I'm starting to think, okay, level should be ending, like, right about here or so. When did this open? Was it the switch I pulled earlier? Probably was. The party is over Nukem. That's right, I was at the end of the level anyways. Now we do have a secret level after this this next level, so remind me. Also, there were a lot of enemies I didn't even spot, so... Fortunately, they didn't take your weapons. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, but yeah, that kind of, that kind of like, um... I guess, yeah, calling it collusion, it really got to me. 
Um, and so that, from that point on, I was like, hey, you know, I'm sort of going to take these people's opinions a bit more of a grain of salt. Like, they're talking about a certain topic, all of them at the same time, not all of them, but a lot of them at the same time. And I'm like, why do they need to, like, talk about that? And that doesn't represent me, so... Now, I knew as well, there were a lot of game reviews that sort of threw me off. In the same year, I think this is probably just as impactful, if not more impactful, I got hyped on Watch Dogs. I will proudly admit, Watch Dogs was the last game I ever pre-ordered. Because, or... Yes. Yes, it was. Um, but... Like, it was the last game I ever pre-ordered, and that was despite getting into hype. I believe journalists who said this game was, you know, great and interesting and such a graphical showcase. And, oh my gosh, I would love to... <laughs> I was like, I would love to go down there. Uh, it is such a graphical showcase, and instead, I played, like, a buggy mess. It ran horrendous on my original machine, which had a GTX 580. Uh, and I had to upgrade to a 980, like, half a year later in order to, like, get to 60 frames a second. It was just dreadful. It was two FPS before. Actually unplayable. Oh, I would like some health, thank you. I love the different shirts the pig cops have, though. I guess not just all looking the same. I'd still love some health, thank you. Where is it? <laughs> yes, this may be an actual song as well. I don't care, it's a good jam. Uh but yeah, no, I, I don't know. Watch Shark was more the cam the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Also a voodoo trip bomb. I mean, it's just a trip bomb. Should I be concerned about that sound? Yes, I should be. Man, they're very, very noisy and bouncy, aren't they? Uh... So yeah, so for me, that was sort of my my journey. At that point onwards, uh, Gamergate evolved into uh, more just, uh, hey, you know, we can keep some momentum and talk about the topics that we like. So a lot of people, you know, some people were concerned about, like, social change and things like that. I would really like that key card, that'd be cool. Um, I think a lot of people as well were continuing to talk about uh, journalists and... Um, generally just reviewers, which I feel like game reviewers sort of had, like, some negative opinions. Uh, sorry, people have negative opinions about some game reviewers. There was a big concern about people getting paid off for stories, which never happens, guys. Never happens at all, Metal Gear Solid 5. Time to crash this it's like, man, you know, like, not a lot of journalists owned up to that one. They just said, oh, what do you mean? This is like a, an ordinary business venture and I'm like are you kidding me like you got invited into a venue you had to play the game in you know like a bit of luxury in a very un unorthodox way to play it and then barely anyone beat the game actually no one beat the game I'm pretty sure no the game was just that perfect bit of too long and you wouldn't quite spot the cracks after that amount of time the, the conchinator well, this is how devastating. Maybe it was the free thrower before. That's right, I got the weapons wrong. I haven't played this in like 10 years. What? It was the bird again. This vacation is looking up. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm wandering around. I haven't found any health in quite a while. And also, key cards. Let's see, I'm wandering around a ton. There's some stuff behind that door, but we'll get there. The music is a jam, though. Uh, but yeah, it, it sort of rode on without, like, my interest as much. Um, and I think one of the biggest problems that Gamergate as a movement had is that it never really ended. Um, it definitely ended in the minds of... I'm itching my eyes a lot. A lot. Sorry, fellas. Um, it ended in the sense of... 
like people were done with talking about journalists in that kind of way. There weren't really that many other new occasions. And I think a lot of people, you know, would just kind of call out each scenario as, as it happened, and it's like obviously journalists wouldn't report on their own malpractice. And, uh... This is a very, very tricky spot with poor health. They are indeed vibing. Watch her go! Going hard, I tell ya. I appreciate the sign that goes up just to just to let you know. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, like without the movement really having a formal end, part of it is just because there's no real leader of the movement as well. But without having a formal end, I think it sort of could be um, what's the term? Twisted and uh, dragged down to its own kinds of. Uh, kinds of meanings. Um, so you started to get the types that jumped on it to then say I was anti it because I'm against these kinds of things. And I'm like, well, you know, I liked Game of Game when the crash it talks about like, you know, journalists like being honest about what they're doing and generally representing the gamers. Uh, conversations about depictions of uh, certain social classes within games is. Uh, not at all what that original topic was about, was it? Perhaps some people springboard. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it was some of the same people, but... Uh, some of the same people, I don't know, so... Uh, we did have recent Gamergate 2 uh, discussions um, only a few months ago, so... Uh, that, uh, that definitely spikes it up again. Um, but I think in general, I think a lot of people are quite wise as to like what's going on in the game industry. And some of it is a bit self-fulfilling. Um, this uh, Concord discussion is certainly one where reviewers, like, sometimes will just say like, ah, oh, you know, like, people just aren't giving the game a fair chance. And it's like, why, uh, why do we have to bat for this? Like, part of me is like, okay, game reviewers, their industry is, oh my gosh, that is the bird. Life's a bitch, and then you die. And you die. Um. Yeah, I'm really kidding. Oh, that's what that does. Should I be activating that now? Oh, there's a secret. Oh my gosh. I have yet to figure out where this red key card goes, but. We'll keep wandering around, we'll keep- we'll find it. Um... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Man, I didn't quick save for a little bit, did I? Alright, where was that? I was in here, you hit the... Conchita banana. There you go. Um... Yeah, I don't really know where I'm going with on this, but uh, definitely, I think it's important. Oh my god, it's important to know what people actually do care about in order to truly get a grip on really anything. I think it's very easy for media, whether it's actual like you know formal media or, or you know what's the term for paid media, not paid media, but like career media, like journalists, that kind of stuff. It's very easy for them to start, you know, like, treating themselves like they're the official source of various pieces of info. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Um, also, we shouldn't exactly give social media, like, a ridiculous amount of more credence. I think there's certainly ni something nicer when, uh, you know, like, something is shared quite freely on the internet, in terms of, like, ideas for reporting, you know, you can report on things uh, just by, like, tweeting them. It's like, oh, that's cool. But sometimes a lot of people lie. There are a lot of things that are not true on the internet. Um, so you gotta, you gotta be careful for that. Uh, journalists who get paid generally don't lie as often. Generally. Does that mean that they are always right? No, no. Um, so, 
I guess, who do you trust? I'd say trust the people whose opinions line up with yours the most. As much as I have disagreed with a uh, fellow G-Man lips, um, and by disagreed I mean more, uh, like, I watch this video, so I'm like, I don't know if that, like, you know, is my opinion as much. Some flat water, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I appreciate G-Man Liz for some of his other takes, so I've generally held him in a higher regard. Although his recent, not a, not recent, but like he um he had a video on Star Wars Outlaws three weeks before release. Like he was invited to a press event, and I'm like props to him for like getting you know to the state where he gets press events. That seagull down here. Props to him for getting into press events because. You know, that's a bit of a dream, right? You know, you play video games, you tell people your opinions, and you're popular enough that you could just do that for a living. I don't know if he still does that. Or if he, sorry, if he does that as his only job. Um, I've had this red key card for a while. I still haven't found it. This is all a secret area, this whole, like, side path, by the way. It's incredible that that's all a secret area there. It's probably why I missed so many enemies on the, uh, on the first level. We gotta keep our eyes out as well, because there's another secret exit as well. Or, well, the only secret exit of this whole stream. is uh, somewhere in this level. So that's the- that's the connecting, like, route into the- the rest of the level. Oh, here we go. Um... I would also generally say, try to separate the, um... You know, like the... Somewhat the author from the words, or that kind of stuff, like... Uh, that's a bit hard to... How do I put it? A big gaming publication does not necessarily represent the interests of the individual critics themselves, and the individual critics don't necessarily represent the interests of, or the, the, like, the opinions of all the staff at a place. So, just, this is something that I think Pro Gamer Gate got a little stumbled on sometimes, is that uh, the whole organization would be at fault for something that one particular person did. But, I think the organizations also should, you know, somewhat own up to... Man, that's a bit of weird backtracking going on, isn't there? That was a switch for the founder, and I saw the word say. It's like, I just had to wander over here. Can you tell these guys made that Smithsonian level? They're wearing like the wife beat at the top. It's like, oh my gosh. It's time to limbo. It's time to limbo. But yeah, I, at the end of the day, I think that's really the biggest the big take home. Um, and obviously, be a bit wiser to journalism. A lot of them are a bit, you know, insidious. There's actually a lot of like. Um, there's a lot of uh, speculation, you know, whether some reviewers get paid off or whether sometimes they're just like this. So why, why is it involved playing with yourself? Okay. Um, there's a lot of speculation of reviewers basically not wanting to step up the toes of the people who give them free products uh, and effectively, you know, allow them the lifestyle that they have, uh, which is, you know, it's not collusion, it's just literally bit of, um, I guess integrity? Just sometimes some journalists or some people just, they don't want to upset, you know, what, they, what they're getting for free. And, uh, that's a problem. People gotta call it out if you see it. I really want to get into these rooms. I'm hoping that's just a sound effect. And we just went up here to get the blue key card and duck out and... That's not just a sound effect, that was downstairs. Alright, take two. Oh my gosh. They shoot so preemptively. It's like you've, you've got to like pre-fire them. That is... Mmm. Because I've got a lot of armor as well, by the way. That's not just like, oh, you're taking two hits. I think that's the best I'm probably going to do with that. Uh, so now we're just going to remember where the blue door was. It was one of these kind of dead-end rooms. There we go. 
it's like, what blew up just then? So, this is the regular exit. We're gonna need to, like, briefly try and figure out where the secret exit is. But I think it's just involving, like, standing on a on a thing and going down a vent. I think that's from memory. Otherwise, I love how many doors there are as well. Wow! Three different doors that all lead into this final room. That makes so much more sense now. Oh my gosh, what? Did I just... Get crushed by water, apparently. That's not a... Woo! This feels like a secret exit in the making, does it not? Oh. Where's my hearing there? Uh, sorry if I haven't talked much. That's all good. Bananas. Ah. I'm hearing enemies. I'm not seeing them. Come on, you want you want to hit it? There you go. Bananas. Okay, that's a secret there. We're trying to I'm trying to figure out where the secret exit is. So I just tab out and try and look it up. There's probably more practical ways to hit this guy. Um, but my gut feeling is the secret exit is probably somewhere else. Why can't switches ever stay on permanent? Well, sometimes they do. Uh, not that one though. There was a vent. I don't think the vent is like visible at all, but sure. Oh. Ah! Oh. a bitch, and then you die. I wish I could jump up there, though. Uh, this is the second level, so I know that there's a secret exit. The wiki describes there's something involving uh, jumping off. Um, it's either off a tree or something. Um, I'll just. just Tap out and see if I've got that like on the ready. Yeah. Uh, Caribbean. Let's look that up. Man, this music is such a vibe though, I'll tell you that. Uh, so, market melee, the secret exit. You can access the secret uh, level from the previously mentioned fish market. Fish market's mentioned in another level, but okay. Sorry, and another secret. Secret to the fish market, you're unlocking secret six. Ignore the boat, head up the stairs and open the door. Okay, so back to the boat. Back to the boat. We're going back to the boat. Wherever it is. Uh, it would have been through here, because this was in the other half of the level. Oh my gosh, that one. The one little ring. Okay, then we were in... Yeah, okay, I can see it on the map. It's like a meme song, not a meme song, but like, you know what I mean? It's like the... Not the A-Team, but something like that. Uh, so it says, head up the stairs, will bring us back to the beginning of the level. If you use the constant poster from the store here. Okay, so it was inside this big, large secret area. Uh, in the fish market, you're unlocking the secret six. You find a pool of water, jump in the water. And then in, from the previously mentioned, in one of the side rooms you'll see a store with some orange fruit. Yeah, this was what I mean. There you go. Store with some orange fruit. No? In? A lot of these have orange fruit. Uh, jump in the orange stuff and uh, fall into a sewer. Is one of these a sewer? Oh, I, you can see it on the map. Now that is cheeky. Yeah, I'm happy taking my time on these. I'm enjoying these though. A full house, that's right. Just immediately get hit by enemies. That's okay, we'll deal with that. Time to crash this party. Oh, 
was, yeah. Very well hidden. Got that one vibin' song as well. Uh... Yeah, so how about let me talk about Kingsfield. Kingsfield on the PlayStation 1 is the first game released by From Software, acclaimed developers of later titles such as Armored Core 4 and Bloodborne. Particularly those two. I don't know why I picked those two. But From Software has this, uh, you know, this kind of S tier rating now. It's kind of like every release they do, it can be no wrong. Despite a lot of people, um, perhaps buying Armored Core 6 who may not have necessarily been Armored Core kinds of fans, thinking that they enjoy Dark Souls and all that. Dark Souls has a bit of infamy in my eyes as uh, a game that people cite, but not a lot of people exactly know that like games can be like other games. And uh, I will I have proceeded to put off that one video. Actually, I might as well briefly mention it. Never came out of Japan. Yes. So Kingsfield One in particular uh, never came out of Japan. If you have a Kingsfield One that is in English, you're actually playing Kingsfield Two. It's like Final Fantasy. They skip the versions they didn't release. Until some point, I guess. Um, although Kingsfield sort of just went on. Um, small reference pools. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of that where it's like... There's a lot of that where it's like, I don't blame people who haven't played a lot of hard games for going, Oh, this is like Dark Souls. People are going to obviously compare things with the things that they know and love. Um, like, for example, uh, I bought a, I bought a, a music instrument library, like a virtual music instrument library the other day, and uh, one of the instruments, one of the synth instruments is uh, called Watcher Strings. And for me, I think I, I get that reference as, uh, to Genesis Watcher in the Skies, um, but you could probably have heard lots of other songs that use that kind of... Check this out, by the way. Pearl Health. It's not Atomic Health, it's Pearl Health. Um, but you could probably have heard lots of other songs that have that same, you know, that same sound font. It doesn't necessarily mean if only people knew more. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what I hope for is that people have more and more of the conversation and go, ooh, you know, this game is like this game, or you'll be reminded of this one, and we can have wonderful, like, kind of, oh, you know, branch off and play this other kind of game. That was exactly why I kind of was interested in playing Kingsfield. Oh, my God. oh there you go. That was why I was interested in Kingsfield. I saw a lot of people say, oh, you know, like, it's the very, very first From Software game, and it inspired some of their later titles, such as Dark Souls. Now, I've only played Dark Souls. That's the only other From Software game I've played. Uh, and also, Armored Core was one of those demos on those on that PlayStation demo disc that I played ages ago. You know, the one, the, the one, the infamous one that crashed. Like, in emulator crashed as well. Um, but, uh... Kingsfield is, in my eyes... Okay, it's, it's alright, but I don't think it's spectacular. And the reason why I don't think it's spectacular is because it has an inverse difficulty level and sort of shows its old hand, or its hand a bit too early. These eggs are massive. What? My son, asswipe. <laughs> uh, massive, oh my gosh. Um, but uh, it shows its hand too early. And in turn, you get uh, maybe a less than exciting game as you go along. Um, the way the combat works is... Oh, so close. So close. Hey, you know, it's, it's localized to so just the bathroom. I'm like looking in there going like, Oh, what are these weird things? Oh, yeah, it's the enemies. Ugh. Um... The way the combat works is that you have a magic button, and you have a attack with your sword button. Uh, attack with your sword is sad that they made Demon Souls specifically Dark Souls, and they stopped making games that weren't like Dark Souls. Um, yeah, like they did go back for Armored Core 6, um, and they do have uh, Sekiro, which I hear is different enough, but depends. Um, Sekiro at least doesn't have uh, a Dark Souls problem I have of... Uh, when people say it's hard but fair, it's like, it's also cryptic. It has things hidden in all these weird places. You're just meant to know that you got to use things. Yeah, yeah, except for AC6, yeah. Um, so Kingsfield... Hmm... Doesn't quite have that problem. The game's fairly straightforward. 
And I'm actually kind of surprised at how I was like, oh, you know, I was expecting the worst and it wasn't actually that bad. You go in, you definitely have to learn how to hit enemies because they're going to hit you, they're going to kill you real easily. You need to somehow, you know, learn how to joust with them. Yeah, I, I think also as well, developers made lots of games, so, like, lots of different series and lots of different titles all at the same time. time to crash this I'm glad that that was the weapon that it's, it was like, I'm gonna swap to that. Uh, yeah, um, the, uh, so, with, with Kingsfield, you sort of go in swinging, you go in going, okay, I need to hit these enemies, they'll drop gold, and it's kind of charming, just like the real simple political death, polygonal style of it all. Um, it's a so early PS1, it came out two weeks after the PlayStation 1's release. So it's not a launch title, but it's real darn close. Um, Japan only does, so. The microphones are almost always a secret, it's kind of surprising. Uh, so we got a blue key cut. oh, my there. Uh, your magic you have like kind of like a spit needle kind of ability you kind of spit a needle at the enemies but your magic doesn't replenish um, it is innocent yeah your magic doesn't replenish the only way your magic replenishes is either with some regenerating uh, potions which you don't really get to afford until sort of later in the game when you unlock a fountain, which you can just replenish all your health and uh, magic for free. Also, the magic fountain actually lets you live if you die. You just teleport back to the fountain. Whereas in... Until then, you die, you die. We still gotta get a yellow key card as well. Captain's table. Dude, I, I'm really enjoying the settings here as well. These guys know what they're doing. I love them. Is it as good as Duke down in DC? I don't know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see by the end. It is shorter though, I will note that. Because it's only eight levels, including the secret level. I love them gaming, I'll tell ya. Um, but yeah, you don't really get to use the magic that much until near the end of the game. And once you get nearer to the end of the game, the enemies don't deal anywhere near as much damage to you as they used to. Like, that's not me, like, getting the best armor and stuff like that. That's just, like, when you level up, you're just naturally so much stronger, and the enemies don't get that much stronger. Come on, there's gotta be a way to get in there, right? Maybe. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no, like, pushback. Uh, now, every floor of the, of the, the game does have harder and harder enemies. You'll notice some of the same enemies have just more and more health. Um, and I think that's like, you know, that's fine, that's expected, but sort of, you get a bit thrown off once you go from the first floor to the second floor, and especially if you haven't explored the entirety of the first floor. Um, then later on... Okay, I've really got going there. There's a crab in there calling my name. I don't suppose there's a key card. But, hmm... Okay, I'm glad that I did that. Cool. Where... Where does it want me to go? Got a door here... Pots, but... Oh! Check that out, wow. Got the health, can I drop into the... That felt like more of a drop than I was expecting, because now I'm on the lower floor. Well, let's, uh, let's back out of that for a hot second, just so I don't have to do the walk back. There you go, this makes a bit Time more sense. Crash this party. Still no key card, though. Come on, where would the key card be? Um... But yeah, yeah, like... Ultimately, the combat doesn't get any more engaging than you walking at enemies. Maybe learning that you can circle strafe? Uh, somewhat. Um, but it kind of works. Uh... And then maybe later on in the game you can start, like, just incredibly stun-locking enemies by hitting them with your magic and then a sword attack. The final boss, you have to basically just time it. You need to know how to stun-lock them. Um... And then basically spam some healing items. 
But the actual, like, I'm going nuts because I swear the key is just hiding in this, like, <clears throat> locker. But the locker isn't open. And I'm trying to, like, visually kind of peek around and go on where... Where could potentially this door open from? Because I'm trying to think everywhere behind the blue door, right? The moment you've gone past the blue door, you know, you've left the area. Where they would have hidden this. Um, darn. Got this whole kitchen area. I'm really, like, scratching my head here. Yeah, it, these guys are a bit guilty of that, because the Duke down in DC had the same kind of problem. Um, and for reference, the kill counter is maxed out, so I don't know if uh, there's actually any more enemies to even engage in or whether... Uh, it's probably had the eggs, so there's probably maybe like a couple. Um, this feels like an odd like kind of route as well, this little part up here. There you go. And it's got this, like, one bit that drops back down. But this isn't, like, dropping back down into, like, a secret or anything. This is just, you know, an earlier room on the lower floor. Like, we were already here. Uh, I can wander all the way back, but... Wherever I'm going. It's kind of confusing again. <laughs> Because they've properly modeled the, you know, the room over room when it needs to. But, yeah, we need a yellow keycard. I'm thinking the yellow keycard is somewhere behind the previous keycard's door. Which always keeps directing me around to the kitchen area, and especially... Hold on, like, I'm going nuts. And my no clip is not working. Every time. What is going on with the console? It just doesn't want to type sometimes. Like, you can see the caps lock key and the shift key and the control key show up, but... No typing. No typing. So, done. Because I really want to just no clip in that wall and make sure that I'm not going insane. Or it's in the... The water there. No, not really, because... It really looks in there. It really looks enormous, all these. Am I going nuts? Alright, I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm looking this up, because otherwise I'm going to be here for hours. Duke, Caribbean, long play, or secret level? Rather, let's find a secret level. Uh, 100% walkthrough. Here we go. He's got commentary as well. Very nice. But we just need to jump to a particular part of the video. Oh, there's the sound. There's the sound. <laughs> I think YouTube's having a moment with me. I'm trying to, like, scrub to a certain part of the video, and it's, like, doing the, the low quality. That's all I get. I got a swirly forever. Just jump to the certain part of the video, please. But he's in the kitchen. He's in that part. I can't see... <sighs> I'm, like, scrubbing the video. I'm not seeing... Exactly what's afterwards. It's just, it's not loading. But he looks like he's right there. He looks like he's right in this one pie. He's looking directly at this enemy right here. And that door is not open yet. Hold on. Just do 144p. Come on, video. Load at 144p. Stuff it. Back up. Uh. A full house, secret level, different different video. Perfect time for YouTube to have a moment. Okay, he's in the pot. He's looking at the, the lobster pit. I'm scrubbing forward. He still hasn't got the key, because we're right at the end of level. Still hasn't got the key. He's in the freezer door. He's exiting it. And he's leaving the... What is he doing here? What? Oh my gosh, I'm going nuts. 
Yeah, what? Okay, this is really weird. He literally just walks around here. Oh my gosh. I'm insane. <laughs> okay, that one's on me. That one's on me. That one's on me. I'm, so I'm sorry I bored people out because I was like, oh, I'm lost in this level. I'm missing the one thing. I know it's roughly in this area and that, that door looked like it. it. It wasn't even the secret. It was the required, like, keycard slot. And it was just literally the... It was literally the, the locker that I kept thinking it was, but in the little weird loop uh, where you had to take damage due to steam, uh, there was a switch in there and that would unlock the door. And the level ends here, so... But, uh, but yeah, uh, the level design was a bit cryptic of, in, in of this, and uh, Kingsfield, uh, you'd sort of keep wandering around, you wouldn't quite know exactly where you were. You'd get a map later on that you could keep consulting by pausing the game, but um, yeah, you could definitely get easily, uh, Mr. Splashes, by the way, is iconic level. Hard icon. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's not like it's like too vague or obscure. Like they didn't really ask that many times for like delivering an item to a location. Um, and when they did, they were very, very explicit about it. So that's not a mystery. Like someone's like, "I need a harp. Can you find me my harp? Can you find me my mirror?" I'm chasing? It? Oh, I don't. Know. I'd really like to get out of this, uh, this area. Thank you. To Mr. Splashy's Super Happy Fun Park. Mm, looks like trouble in paradise. <laughs> I love these textures, I tell ya. It's incredible. Um. Hi there. Ouchies, but I did notice a secret, so. There you go. Ooh, I hate getting <laughs> Dang it. Ooh, I hate getting We're gonna keep hearing him say he hates I things. Hate First try, first try. Uh, <laughs> love this as well, the 30 minute wait. We had another level that was like this, didn't we? So, wait, we, do we, can we operate this? <clears throat> Come on, you gotta be able to operate this, right? Uh, there we go. Yes, now we're just gonna have to walk it. <laughs> Every single water ride has like a weird drop and then like an absolute bizarro like kind of location. I'm hearing them, I'm not seeing them. You ever like been on like parts of the Caribbean ride? Um, at the end of the day, though, I, I wouldn't necessarily not recommend Kingsfield. I've probably been talking negative about it, but I do like the, you know, this neat little enemy variety going on. I like the progression that you can do, where even though it's as straightforward as just you level up and you get some equipment and, uh, you know, you can spend your money on, on other equipment, that kind of stuff, uh, and also you generally will just find all your equipment later in the game. You don't... Like, you don't, you don't actually need to buy stuff after all. Um, yeah. Also, it gets so easy later in the game. Like, it's it's actually, like, I I didn't feel like anything was a threat. It was just very straightforward. Um, but it's kind of novel, and uh, part of me keeps forgetting that it's 1994. This isn't late PS1. This is, like, two weeks after launch PS1. So I have to frame it in the market of 
were there other RPGs at the time? Like, this is... You know, Chrono Trigger wasn't out yet, for example. Like, that's how old this game is. And oh, it's a bit of a different experience than Chrono Trigger. Love the volcano. Love the fake water. Love the fake volcano. Just a model. Now we've got this door open. Yeah, we can go this way. Oh my gosh, every time. Can we do that without taking damage, please? Ooh, hi there. Oh my gosh. That's how, you, that's how you know it's either late at night or I'm just completely inexperienced. Oh my goodness. Those children need help. They're trapped on this con crazy contraption. Oh, hi there. Who agreed to spawning all the enemies behind me? Uh, the one thing about DOS RA that I've read a tiny bit about, uh, no one has mentioned it since. One little tiny point. Teeny weeny point. Um, don't know why, how familiar you are with this era of gaming. Uh, I only had a couple of games growing up, and I've not particularly explored the DOS library a ton, so... It's probably, probably if you're gonna say, ah, oh, did you know this? I'm like, hey, I would if you told me, maybe, but... I don't know if it's something I would just, like, come up with off the top of my head. Depends on what you're about to say. Um, I love how the Shrink Ray is actually a voodoo ring, by the way. One day, maybe I'll use it. It's not technically DOS. Oh, <laughs> actually, what you're using is not Linux, but a uh, <laughs> GNU Linux <laughs> or the software. You're right. Let's get that copy pass uh, out. Yeah. But it's because you know DOS is a general term, but people use DOS mostly to mean the MS DOS variety. Um, I don't think DOSBox accommodates for all DOS like systems. One because there's bound to be a lot of other ones, so it's just like, how do you keep up with it? Very log flumes, water rides everywhere. I love how hearing screams means people are actually on these rides somewhere. And yes, those are real sharks. There was this type of game called PC Booter. Going in there. Alright, was the blue the blue key was back? No, that's yellow. Ah, we'll find where the where the key goes after wandering through various camps of red key. Okay. Ah, there we go, it's back out here. Oh my gosh, one hour wait. Uh, basically the self-booted games that let you play a game even if you don't have an operating system. That's interesting. That's actually pretty neat. Obviously, they sort of have the operating system like features and capabilities because you've got to be able to, you know, display the display the outputs and things like that. I love this setting, by the way. It's so good. Uh, a bit like plug and play games. They had a minimal OS. Yeah, that makes sense. To, to how you do it. And it's kind of weird, it makes sense at the time as well because MS-DOS, or yeah, MS-DOS in particular, it's a monoprocess operating system. It runs one thing at a time. I think it's, I think it may have the ability to suspend applications, but like, it can only compute one thing at a time. Um, and in particular, it doesn't just like, switch between them, like Unix does. It's like, nope, that's your one game. It's there. DOS adjacent, yeah. But, it, I mean, you're right, well, you are right where it's DOS adjacent in the sense of, well, if it's an operating system that runs one thing, is that basically just, like, just kind of skipping one step? But it's effectively the same thing. 
kinda. <clears throat> Woohoo! Very nice. Very, very nice. Alright, and we went through all of that to not get a key card. I want that, I want it. Yeah, I think the distinction is whether you select the program. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think we're gonna have to dig through here again because I'm gonna need to leave here with a key card. Such a fun romp though, I'll tell you that. Would make sense that a key card would exist in this room. Ooh. Hold on. Oh hi there. What are you doing? There you go. Key card. Sorry, credit card, sorry. Vista is such a nice like word to use instead of Visa though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, other than that, this week, uh, you know, back into Gran Turismo 3, so... Gran Turismo 3, I will say, I completely get why people really, really love it. Uh, shelling the DOS box pure, uh... The... Who's up in Aria with adding the support mention in the PR, and mapping for DOS hashing and memory mapping. I do wish... I, I mean, you sort of... Maybe you do need memory mapping for, um those kinds of games because uh, if the operating system itself has other memory and the actual program memory doesn't start at the same place, you know, catastrophe, so. That's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, no, I played Gran Turismo 3. That one's a good vibe. Um, what would that open up here? Here, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we're on the ride now. Ronnie said he basically implied that the system was uh, made specifically to support PC booter games as well. Just because people haven't mentioned it? Oh, that's fair. <coughs> Little platforms right here. <coughs> Think they'd hide a key card around here? Nah, they're just hiding coconut launcher. Uh, yeah, no, Gran Turismo 3. One thing I am absolutely jealous about for Gran Turismo 3, I'm playing the, the US version of it, and, um... Oh my gosh, man, the European version has barely any of the songs. We have so many different songs, and we have so few songs in general. Like, the count is so much lower. It is very cool. It's got... Uh, my only gripe with it is that Gran Turismo 2 and 4 particularly pride itself off its mountains of content. And 3... Definitely has a very, like, reduced selection of tracks and cars. Um, and for that as well, a lot of the cars, a lot of the tracks themselves are repeat tracks. They brought back Special Route, uh, Special Stage uh, Route 11 from Grand Turismo 1. Um, but they have some new ones. They got a Tokyo R246, um, which reappeared in 4. They have uh, the Cote de Jour. Track, which also reappeared in Grand Turismo 4. Um, Swiss Alps. Uh, it's also got a couple of tracks that didn't actually. Oh my god. The drones. Uh, it's got a couple of tracks that didn't appear in Grand Turismo 4, which I thought was surprising. So, um, Smoky Mountain North is one of my favorites, and it's like, oh, some Grand Turismo 4. Um, I think there's one other one as well. Special Route didn't appear. Um, but yeah, there's some other ones, like, it's got, uh, it doesn't have high speed ring. It doesn't have, um, it's got Grand Valley and, um, Special Stage Route 5, but it doesn't have, uh, the shorter versions of those circuits, which is interesting. It doesn't have Autumn Ring, I believe, as well. It's just, like, a lot of ones where it's like, oh man, I wish it had these tracks. Uh, we... Ice Cube, sure. Oh. I'm waiting until we get that keycard. I think we need to keep an eye out for a keycard. From what I can tell, GT, they just keep adding things uh, to later releases since the European versions always come out last. I, it seems that way, but also it... We're lacking... Oh my gosh, how do you get in there? Nice. You just jump over the wall. They can't stop me. I 
I've opened up, open, open, I can talk, opened up a new route. Somewhere. Is so there somewhere else down here? Can we notice it on the way around? Why can't I just make an ultimate version? A part of, yeah. I feel like they, sh you know, if you release a, a version of the game, you should probably be a bit, like, you know, conservative on adding tons more content to a European release. Um, but there is a bit of that when it comes to uh, Grand Turismo for some reason. It's always been like that until the PSP version. Uh, it's Labyrinthian, but it does have, like, a flow to it. And sort of iconic areas. And it's like each of these areas as well. Like, you're in a little bit of a hub room. There's three keycard doors. You know, you'll probably grab one keycard in one of the doors, and then you'll move on to the next one and so on. So here it's like, got that. I'm, I was like, I'm expecting some dudes. I do have big muscles. Time to go on the waves. <laughs> Look at all these dudes. They just wanted to have a fight scene that's like this. Which is a bit hilarious when you got a rocket launcher, but sure. Water slides. It's closed off, I guess. I, don't suppose, oh. I was like, I don't suppose they want you to jump up here, and they do. Oh my goodness. Interesting, but sure. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we can go down here, and hopefully I don't get crushed. There we go. Look at what is happening here. Oh, never mind. I do like decisions. Which door are we going down? One, two, three, or four? Wrong answer, we're going down three. It's always number three, my lord. Oh my goodness. Kobayashi Maru. Okay. Maybe they all lead to the same place. It's time to limbo. Uh, the wave mistress. We need a good boat level, don't we? Come on. Yeah. So how long were we out on the out on the boat for? It was daytime, and now it's just pitch black night time. And then I did that to myself. I'm just gonna casually drop some pineapples. Oh my gosh, cheap viewers! Man, my viewers are never cheap. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, did that twice. Maybe a bug in the comments. He is cheap. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Dude, that's always a- I don't- Twitch bots are hilarious, because it's just like, what's the point? But also, like, why? Why did they try so hard? I think the answer is, is that they're bot accounts that are trying to gather bot accounts. Damn it. The women got in the way of my vertical auto-aim. Uh, yeah, I'm currently, I, I'm trying to do all the, the license test gold for Gran Turismo 3. I'm currently up to S6 and I suck at the S licenses. You get enough, uh, cast enough nets. Don't push a bit. Oh well, yeah, that's that's how it works. The cost of writing that one message is very low, but if you repeat that enough times, eventually someone is going to pay like five bucks or ten bucks, which is not a very high amount, but it's like that's the returns they can they can go off. Shout out to uh, the one computer store that's failing to refund me. Thank you, CPL Online. I'm calling you out by name, but uh, that's a <laughs> Speaking of getting scammed, I'm like, oh my gosh, like... 
I, I hate, like, having to be like that guy, because I do wish places could change. But, like, oh my goodness, I bought a, a, a QNAP DAS months ago. July, like, 22nd. Uh, sorry, June 22nd. And it took a while to come in, a few weeks. But I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then it came in, and I could not, for the life of me, get it to work on Linux. On Ubuntu in particular. They advertise Ubuntu, but I'm trying to get it on TrueNest scale, which is Debian based. And in theory, it should be the same. But, uh, yeah, for the life of me, I could not get anything Ubuntu working with, uh, with this DAS. I could get Windows, I noticed the first disk drive wasn't working, like, full on, no matter what disk I put in. Just didn't work, but, uh, oh, this box. Uh, so, I sent it back two days later, I was like, hey, you know, it's not doing what it should. Uh, probably just going to get a refund, because, you know, it advertises the next support, it doesn't do it. Um, and, uh, the store, the snake inside. Yeah, never look inside the box, oh my gosh. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, the store was like, oh, you know, I'll send it in, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the refund. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, and then weeks passed, it was like four weeks, I was like, hey, guys, did you forget? Well, I had a thing. Like I, they didn't they didn't pay for a shipping label as well, which is like mm, it's a bit of a no-no. You meant to pay for the shipping label, and then you meant to charge me to get it back. That's how it goes. That's how it usually works. Um, but I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. I need to get it done quick, and they're gonna pay me back at the end anyways, because kind of have to. There we go. Kick open. I cannot see anything. Oh my gosh, it's gonna save right there. Dead. There we go, we're off to the other side. What do we do on the other side? We got some pipes. So you were saying about uh, claustrophobia earlier. <laughs> Oh boy. There you go, all for the red key card. All for that. Worth it, but still. I do like me a good boat level though, so I will excuse any claustrophobia because it's like a submarine level. Which we already did. That's what they already did. They did it in Duke and DC. Oh my goodness. They already did that in Duke and DC. But yeah, no. So, four weeks later I called up going, Hey, where's the thing? And they're like, Oh, you know, we've got it. We're just waiting for a response from the manufacturer. I was like, Okay, sure. And then they immediately responded to me. I was traumatized by boat levels after boat. Oh. My condolences, my man. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the, they sent me an email the day after going, Hi, do you have a support ticket from QNAP themselves for the DAS? And I was like, You are very lucky that I did consult them, because if I was at this point, I don't own the device. They have it. Like, the store has it. I wouldn't be able to, to do any, you know, checking whatsoever so I was like I do but there's a bit of a regrettable like yeah okay sure I, I, I do have it you're lucky I have it um, yeah exactly exactly so uh, then weeks later today just today they messaged back saying okay we've got a replacement part give us a shipping address and we'll give you the new unit and I was like we said I was doing a warranty replace, sorry, like a refund. Like, it's not, it doesn't do what it should. And, you know, you pr you may have fixed the disk drive one thing, but I'm, I don't know if you fixed the drivers overnight like that. Maybe they did, I don't know, it, it's possible. Um, depending on the, uh, the add-in card itself, I actually might have gotten, um, an old unit, so I actually might get it back and actually might work, so. 
Maybe I will give him a, a chance, but oh my goodness, like... Seagulls, oh my gosh. Um, but like, oh my goodness, like what's going on there? Time to crash yeah, exactly, everybody. but like... Man, I do not want to deal with a store ever again. I really don't want to deal with a store. Because, like, because I, I then said I, I wanted a refund, and they were like, sorry, we don't do refunds. You're going to have to get approval from QNAP themselves in order to refund it. And I was like, what on earth kind of store is that? Well, you have to message the manufacturer and get them to tell the store to let you get your money back. They don't... They don't have any relationship. In fact, they may even go through a distributor. So like, QNAP themselves, the distributor may not know what's wrong with your device. QNAP knows what's wrong with your device, but they have no idea where you bought it from. Like, what is going on here? So, absolute insane scenario. I do wish CPL, you get better, because this is like, this is horrendous. I have a red key card. I've just been wandering around completely aimless on where I use it. Blue one goes there. We grabbed the key card from here. So I think it was back at the back of the part because it makes sense why like there's nothing really going on here other than lifts to the the what's the name of the ship? The stern, the stern of the ship. I love the wave mistress signs though. What a what a name. Yeah, it's probably just down there somewhere. Um, in the short term, though, until I'm confident that CPL has uh, improved their services, having to refer to other places that refer to other places... Oh, yeah, yeah, like... Like, this is one... We have... Australia is notorious for having, like, some of the most aggressively pro-consumer, like, consumer rights and, and advocacy groups and things like that. Um, so, 100%... CPL is in the wrong here. Where is it? Also, you're meant to pay for my shipping. Come on, guys. There's an Asterix cartoon that has a great scene about this. Good old Asterix. Yeah, this is why I got confused about this. Two different, like, parts that look very similar. This is just a regular door I didn't go down. Whoop. I really want to get that guy before he's like that miserable. Whoops. <laughs> nice. Nice. I hope you appreciate just dying. Uh well yeah, like the the accountability for the mistake should be that they get like suit up the wazoo. I feel like there, there was a, another computer parts store uh, a while ago called um, MSY, and they sort of got bankrupted because of that. Um, their assets then ended up getting bought by a company called Umart that didn't want to change the name of the physical stores, so they kept the name for those, but they're all owned under a different one. Uh, do I particularly feel if they don't if they don't do right by me, then definitely that that thing was expensive. The, the legal fees are less than the actual product itself. I'm very upset that I have to go through this whole process just to even get the thing working, because, like, that product should, like, you know, it should be working day one, but also, like, the store themselves should be like, hey, I want happy customers and customers who are using the products that are right for them. If a customer not only, like, it, this is not a change of mind, but if it's like the product as advertised doesn't work on their specific setup, the product itself could still work for someone else. It would be very trivial to just refund them and, and wait until someone else wants to buy the product and maybe, oh, maybe they'll use Windows, so it actually does work. The idea is you do it for other people to not get stuck. Oh yeah, exactly. Like, out of principle, I wish you did it. Uh, I, I would love to just, you know, not, not sue them, but like to, to, to do right and make, make a good example out of this. You need to be made right. Um, but obviously, like, there's gonna be some people where it's like, yeah, I, like, I was in a similar situation, but I couldn't, like, act on it, because... Legal fees. Most people don't want to bother- some people. yeah, some people just suck- suck up the cost as well. They're just like, well, 
I like I saw a Whirlpool uh, forums post um, where someone bought like a Canon product for forty bucks, and they <coughs> and they actually found the um the distributor themselves because Canon doesn't know. Canon just sells the product to the distributor, and then the distributor goes to the store, and then the store is what you interact with. So it's like you had to figure out this fourth party. You had to figure out an extra party to this whole thing. Hey, it's been a while since we've had these guys show up. Hi, I would like to drink you. Thank you. I got him. It's all good. Do you like me a danger lift? Oh, come on. <laughs> the sound effect is what makes it. That's basically what I'm not too happy about RA as well. I mean, at least for RA, I don't owe thousands of dollars. Well, they don't owe it. Alright, do you remember the key code? Okay, that turns the lights off. Which one does which? What does what? Oh, the keycard right behind me, that's what it is. With the moderation rather than the devs. That's fair. I do like me a puzzle door. Okay, I seem to be doing the exact opposite of what is needed. Okay, that's with all of them up. Hold on. Like, I don't think they are bad people. I'm not sure why they don't want to address the problem. Hey, I mean, you know, I hope you get the... the this all sorted out in the end. There we go. We've got a wonderful door out. I've got two keycards as well. I was expecting the red keycard to get used around it. Maybe maybe the red one comes after the blue door. Does this guy have a lot of health? Let's go with it. Care about other users? I want to be the one who bothers. I am the one who bothers. As long as you're, you're courteous and you're following rules, it's all good. These guys spawning in, or they've always been there. I just didn't notice. <laughs> All right, complex boat levels be like. Listen, I enjoy it, but oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense to respawn enemies, because otherwise it's going to be just a backtrack with nothing to do. Ouch. I'm enjoying it, though. This level is longer than, like, three of the... Oh, it's double key door. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh! And they had a suicide final room. Suicide final room. Very nice. I mean, they've, like, they stacked this as well. I don't think there's any teleport rooms. Because usually as well, when you want to, like, have complex room over rooms, you, um, you make it so that the player basically warps to a different, like, corner of the map. But, uh, no, they've, they've put in the effort. It all stacks on top of itself, so... Very nice. A good boat level goes a long way. Time to crash this party. So we're we up to level five. We've got three to go, I think. Time the Lost to crash Lagoon. This party. 
I do enjoy me a good lagoon level. Where sharks are not enemies, apparently. You might be wondering how the water pistol is working. I'm glad we're able to share our grievances with customer support. Yeah, I I feel like, okay, I, there's times when it's like, I feel like there's like good luck and bad luck. And it's like, man, you know, I've been bit by the bad luck. And, and some of the people around me have been bit by the bad luck. So I'm like, man, is it contagious or is it just like, what's going on? Everyone's in a foul mood. I gotta find a way to get over there. And they haven't given you the jetpack. I, I, I like how even the items are themed, so instead of like x-ray vision, it's just sunglasses. Which seems arguably more fitting for Duke Nukem, does it not? Anyway, what are we dealing with here? We've got a big kind of wall here. More water, but that's just where I came from. Nope. Yes. Yes. With your case too, I'm not sure if any of the people who uh, interacted with you is to blame. Um, potentially for that one, but I... The worst part is that that Whirlpool forums thread, I saw someone name, name drop the same guy who I spoke to, at least by first name. There's, they don't do surnames, so you can never really know, but it's like, hmm. Oh my goodness. Sunk like a stone. Uh, yeah, I, like, a, a classic example is like the people who are um, involved with uh, your customer support are not the ones deciding what happens, they're sort of following a script or someone higher up is like maybe, you know, getting them to take the fall, but it's like, ugh, it's the, it's the worst. But that being said, it's like, you know, they're people, they're doing what, you know, what they should be doing, oh, hi there. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's, you know, like, I, I'd, I would prefer to do something that is you know, morally right, and I know it's like, oh, it's a company thing, it's like... How do you... How do we get over there? Because I haven't seen too much more of this level, so... This area didn't have anything other than the shell. The issue, I think, is that the system is specifically engineered... Well, I, I mean, I don't even think there needs to be, like, accountability, because flat out it's like, well, you know, there's only... Two, oh. There's only so many people who work for the store. And ultimately, you know, the head CEO is always the most responsible. All, all problems should either be explainable under him or owned up by the CEO. Most interesting. I thought I would've hit someone. Oh, it's lava! Also, check it out. Saw this around. Get some pineapples. We're about to get my face melted by a dude. What is the reason for these stairs? Where does this go? Where does this lead to? If you tried to blame a CEO, they think it was a ridiculous claim because it's not a big deal. But to me, it's a big deal. It's thousands of dollars. <laughs> Whoops. I'd argue as well, it's like, if... Actually, yeah, I've got to somehow get out of here. Where are they shooting from? Where is any of this coming from? Oh. Makes a bit more sense. Who knows where they're coming from? Yeah, I, a, a part of it is also, like, there are some, like, hardships I'm getting at work where it's like, man, you know, like, working harder and not necessarily being, like, noticed or rewarded for it, it happens, it's fine, but it's just like, oh my gosh, like, like, putting it, putting in some crazy time, some crazy effort. Doing some actual miracles, but yeah. 
I think they want to make the situation as awkward as possible psychologically so people don't lodge a formal complaint. Well, I mean, yeah, if you've if you've never been through this before, it's very easy to fall into the trap. There goes my right out of here. Too many guys in tuxedos. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, true, true. But even then, like, but I know what you mean. Where it's like it's very easy to attribute malice because it's happened. Like, it, this is not a oh, you know, like we're we're expecting what it's like flat out. It's like no, I've been through this. I've had other swords do this and sometimes I've just gone hey you know like it was a hundred bucks I I can not accept but it's like I can feel defeated with a hundred bucks spent oh yeah 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 it's it's like the only the only reason why MSY uh, eventually lost well they they got like class action by lots and lots and lots of people ended up totaling seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in damages which at the end of the day after all those people it's like hey, you know like it's a lot of money but uh, yep mm -hmm. we're nearly there but it's it's also just like you know oh my goodness hold on can i no oh okay never mind <laughs> They're just jerks. They're just jerks. <laughs> it's like, the worst thing is just, uh, about personally being offended. But if no one complains about these things, they're affected. Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. So out of principle, I want to either like fight this or get done right. I want them to help me out because, like, I think the pro the problem is that the damage has been done. I'm now formally at that point where I'm saying, don't shop there. And anyone watching don't shop there, which is like, uh, I don't think I know who I am and I don't think I've got a crazy wide reach, but legit, if you've got engagement challenge, if you're on YouTube, um, let me know if you've had any horror stories with um, any kind of online retailer, things like that. I know like Amazon is particularly like hands off and you'll never be able to speak to a human, but they also do have a lot of mechanisms to somehow just get your money back and kind of be a bit happier than if, if they were doing this, which is holding onto my money for months. I could be making interest off that. If they're making interest off my freaking money, by the way, I swear. Like, what... What a joke, if that is. Like, that's, that's a rich keeps getting richer kind of moment. Just make mistakes because you benefit from it. There's gotta be a clue here. Hmm. Destroy the one that does not stand the sun. I find it somewhat depressing that people online in this space just inadvertently replicate. Eh, yeah, I guess. That's why I don't moderate. I'm not a very good judge of character. Alright, destroy the only one that does not stand the sun. Oh, you mean like this guy? I mean, he's standing in the shade. I'm not going back downstairs. We're not doing it. You can't make me. Do they want me to go? I mean, it doesn't look like you destroyed this guy, but you somehow need to have a blue key card. I know they've got the clue, but what do they? Which one do they mean specifically by destroy the one? Which one is the one? I might be that guy, I might just check the video again, because I'm going to be here for ages. We're already at 2.30. And I might be here a while. So we got the last lagoon, we're now up to level 6. Oh wait, hold on, we got... Oh, this is the second last level. Ah, we're all good. <laughs> uh, okay. 
another video, this time with commentary, again. Okay, I don't recognize where he's standing right now. Yeah, what the heck, he's got a blue keycard this soon, or...? Are we in the same level? Where the heck did this guy even go? Where on earth? Oh my goodness. I still have no idea where he is. It's like a minute into the level. But I see him pick up the blue key card, and that probably gives it away. Uh. All right, where where am I going wrong? Like, where, where does he immediately find something new? This is not the same level. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, well, sorry, we're in Lost Lagoon. That's why. That's why it doesn't look the same. <laughs> oh my gosh. Rookie error. I look up the wrong level. Uh, okay, is that the Heli Chopper? Let's see, skip forward. He has the key card now. Where did he get the key card? It's going up the long lift. And he's shooting some people, and he's at the outside area that I was at. Oh. Okay. It's less cryptic than I thought it was, but it's still cryptic in my eyes. But that blame this one on me again. They mean these little pillars. That one is physically just standing there. Okay. Again, I was stuck right at where I needed to be, but... Still. Oh, that's fun. Anyone's gonna show up? Where is it? Yo. Where is it? Oh, there we go. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm not sure how you're supposed to. Uh, uh, I, it was the sign that said, like, destroy the only one that's in the shade. You sort of had to guess that it was the pillars. Oh, well, that's fun. Hi, yes, this, uh... Maybe a bit too low for me. Okay. Sure. Oh. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Gotta get this thing to push you lower into the floor. And now we have blown up another pyramid? Mandatory squish, exactly. The mandatory squishing section. Down the river we go. Now we're back here. Oh wait, no, not just back here, but also... Well, still sort of back here, but this this part is more open now. Whoa. At least they shoot each other. At least there's that. Obviously gotta go upstream the river. They're going down the river. That's where they're going. Um, but yeah, so to speak a bit more just about Duke Nukem 3D and all this stuff. Remember, this is the last official expansion that we're really going to be playing. Um, next week will be the uh, hopefully the final stream where I'll be playing the 20th anniversary uh, edition levels. But in terms of at the time, this was sort of the last bit of content for Duke Nukem 3D. Now, it was a solid run. I mean, you could definitely feel that when Duke Nukem 3D works well, it's got this real nice charming level design and um, 
I think that's the strength of just the way the build engine is made and the way it encourages you to make certain structures and also all the tools that it's got available to making that kind of work out. Yeah, it's a good way to send it off. The Christmas... Eh, it, it does show the weakness of the engine, but I think in the same way you could probably find uh, Doom levels that have the same problem. Um, some of the master levels for Doom 2, you can definitely feel this like, eh, kinda vibe going on. And here we go, a wonderful plane. <laughs> Off into the sunset. But yeah, no, we can just go up into it and get a visa. Catch of the team. But the big ones is probably uh, like the slopes, the um, the items in play. Although Doom, like when Hexen came out, has items. Um, also, this idea of like room over room uh, was pretty good. But they also came out like years apart as well. So Duke Nukem 3D has had some time to get it a bit more right. And obviously. Decisions, decisions. The left door is the best door. No? Do they do anything? Oh boy. It's even better. To the red slope. I do enjoy Crash Bandicoot. Most interesting. Look at this! Like what? <laughs> these guys knew. These guys knew how to like make something quite, quite cool. Very big pyramid. Blow it up. Where's my pl Oh, hi. I guess he's gone. Oh, I was like, where's my platform of choice? Oh, you know, the lava. Down we go. Oh. So now we're back out here. Why are we back out here? Ah, there's now a boat. There you go. Very nice level. Very fun. Very, very nice. All okay. right. I take it back. I thought I was like, "Oh, we're on the second last level." This counting is to the extreme. We got the Voodoo Caves, and then we got one more level. So, Voodoo Vince's Voodoo Caves. But yeah, like, there's definitely you know a lot of charm to how Duke Nukem 3D's levels work, and we'll see, especially like the best case scenario. Um, for that in the uh, 20th anniversary levels, just like what happens when you take the engine to the extreme. Um, but the engine was also used for um, the uh, the team worked on uh, Shadow Warrior, which came out after this uh, in '97. Still on the build engine, but I think they knew of a couple more very useful tools to make that engine really, really shine. Uh, for example, there's a couple of vehicle sections in Shadow Warrior, which is like, oh my gosh, wow. Um, the build engine also later got used for games such as Blood, which uh, people definitely love a lot, and Redneck Rampage, which I don't hear as much about, but I hear some good things about it. I haven't yet played it myself. I saw some here and there with the level uh, design, I, I hear. That's, that's what makes me go a bit... Mm. But, um, definitely the, the engine itself is a big talking point. Yeah, this makes a bit more sense. I was, I was looking at the video of this level going like, I don't remember this part. Okay, come on. That's just cool. Get out of there. Oh, the teleporting ones. We haven't seen them in a while. Makes sense. Two buttons. Sure. <laughs> this looks like it opens up somehow. I don't know. But, uh... Certainly, though, I, I think 
the build engine and Duke Nukem 3D at its worst is when it starts becoming a labyrinthian key, uh, key hunt and or just very polygonal and abstract. Duke Nukem 3D's biggest strength is getting locations looking and feeling somewhat more real and grounded compared to... Oh my gosh, jeez. <laughs> we did it. We jumped again. We jumped again. I always hate it. I always hate those guys. Uh, yeah, I'm just expecting them everywhere in this level now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, the good spirit's gone. They're throwing those dudes in places I'm not expecting them. You know, it's, you know, I'm gonna get upsetty. Locked. Um. But yeah, uh, the build engine also got a bit of a later love uh, with a game called. Uh, Upset his spaghetti. What is, what is going on here, by the way? Where is it? Um, the build engine got a bit of later love with a game called Ion Fury or Ion Maiden, is it? It was almost going to be called until Iron Maiden. Didn't like them calling it that, which mm, may be fair, but mm, different markets, guys. See, I've activated this. I don't see anything. Uh, and Ion Fury had a uh, had a expansion as well, so there's a lot of content to it. I have uh, unfortunately yet to play it, and I really need to get around to it. So, <laughs> bug me more to play it. Bug me more to play the uh, the Doom 2024 levels as well. Okay, we need a key card. This guy found a blue key card somewhere. We're wandering around in a in a loop right now. And this room is like a puzzle. What is going on here? Ah. It's a secret. It was a secret. Ah. Oh. Sequel inspired by Quake that wasn't nearly as good. Uh, I've seen s some other ones. I think, uh... Was it a Medieval was one? Had some good things about that one, though. Yeah, I don't think there's any hidden areas here. So, okay, I guess we're just make our, making our way back down. I need a blue key card. Ah, oh, really? Time to crash. No, that's another secret. Okay, we're back out here. Uh, went through this little tiny cave, which ended up here in front of a red door. I was back over here. Uh, like, there's not been a ton of level, but there's been enough level that's got me a bit confused on where to... Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> the tree hides the secret. You see that? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's another secret. Sorry, I, I'm struggling to find the actual way to go because I'm busy just... Finding the secrets. Oh my goodness. Where am I getting so lost on? What? This, like, staircase really gives me, like, the odd feelings, because... I mean, it gets darker, so it's sort of giving a bit of a hint of maybe you don't go here just yet. It wasn't Iron Fury that had the sequel. No, no, it's got the, it's got the expansion, but... <clears throat> this room seems very odd, I don't know what's up with that. Blew that up. 
that's there. Also, I'll give it like one more perusal and then I'm like, yep, back to the video. Add this little side area, which dress. I'm worried that it's probably just another like, you know, door I've got to bust open. A wall I've got to bust open. I just don't know it. Like, I'm just not spotting it. Alright, so the video walkthrough. Bugs on what game you're thinking. Alright, what does this guy do? Just need to figure out where he gets a blue key card. What is he doing? What is he? Let's see. He flicks those two switches. Oh no! Really? Okay, we need to go back to the room with the two switches. I'll find it. Don't worry. Because I think it was just up here, was it not? Yeah, sorry, the room with the two switches, actually, when you activate these switches, it moves this. I'm just blind. Now what? I don't know. I worried I've shot that, like, enough times so that I don't know if that... That's doing the right thing or not. We'll see. So, red key card. Still can't use that. But we scroll, scroll through here. We're at here, the blue key card room. We've got this little area over here. This door may be open now? No. This underneath bit may have more involved. Nope. I'm just going to jump back here because... <laughs> Why do we... What do we do next? Uh, the, the visual guide is a bit... It's a bit thin. I've been wandering around for minutes. My impatience is mostly because it's on stream and I'm worried I'm gonna lose some... Lose some attention, I'll tell ya. Cause it's just like, uh, me wandering around. What am I missing out here? What am I missing? So he shoots these. Oh, okay. No, sorry. Again, it's 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 partially on me. So after you shoot that, then there's a little tiny. But no. Yes, actually. Like you just meant to see that happen. And then I don't know why he's got a button behind him here. What is going on here? Uh, there's like a oh my gosh, I I'm going nuts because I watch this guy do this and suddenly there's a button behind him. Unless it's just not rendering for me. Am I just going insane? Oh, it's been nice having. Yeah, it's been alright. Yeah, where is that button? There's a button on this guy's game as he does this. Mine doesn't have the button. The wall has gone down. The button is not there. Am I'm going nuts? Or hold on, because does he does he do anything fancy in this room? Am I just like going to say no? First time he's into the room because he's shooting the enemies. And then one button, two button, things from the top lower. 3 button, 4 button, he immediately goes around and presses the button behind that guy. There's no button on my end. Am I doing... Uh, deleted from the game. Yeah, maybe. Hold on, legit. Like... Just... 
reload it. This party. I don't think that would usually clear it up, but... How odd. How very, very odd. Oh, yeah, okay, I just had to shoot roughly there. Also, there's a guy. Oh, now it's there. Where was that a moment ago? I'm sorry, I'm going insane because the switch just didn't want to render for me. And there's your blue keycard. There we go, we're happy, we figured it out. What? I, I can't explain what was just happening there. Hopefully someone can't. Well programmed? Maybe. It could, it... Arguably it could be e 32 the source port, doing its weird shenanigans, but... Uh, and then we go over here, that's the red ones, we swim through here, we're up here, and we're at the blue door. Finally! Eight minutes in, I've figured it out. I do hate those enemies, they're just... no remorse, they're gonna shoot at you. But, we did it boys, we got there. That's not like the most obvious secret in the world, I don't know what is. Uh... Do we gotta, do we gotta go quick? I think we gotta go quick. Yep, gotta go quick. There we go. Oh, lots of people in this room. And I may have shot someone out into oblivion. Okay, it happens to the best of us. Yeah, no, he's just gone. Also, what is... This ground? It was sinking? Okay. Look at that bait kind of enemy placement. I do like me a good arena. There we go. Red key card. Makes sense. Let's just make sure I don't shoot my rocket launcher a bit too prematurely. Always prevent premature rockets. Uh, okay, so then the red key card was again just back over this route and up over here. There we go. Oh my gosh, I really, really hate these guys. They serve no benefit to society. Uh, can a level only have at most three key cards? Uh, it can, but you can consume the key card. So if you wanted to be fancy, you could actually make it so at most the player would have three different kinds of keys. Trying to discern what's going on audio wise. Down we go, I guess. A nice little down the bottom of the. There's nothing down here. There's F. Oh. I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. That's just there's a there's a there's a, there's a jetpack down here. You, you left this for me, guys. Oh you. Oh you. I really would like some uh, more comfortable ammo than just the just the pistol, though. Okay, where are we at? We're at here. Here we go. Jump up. Jump up. And get down. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm having a good time with this. Silly goobers. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I think they're having a... They probably had a decent time, like, making this, and you know what, it, it's, it's all good. Um, certainly, I think that the quality is a bit more consistent on Shadow Warrior. I think they had a very clear, like, intention of what they were building and what the levels were, you know, focusing on. Um, and somewhat, you could sometimes do multiple kinds of concepts in one level in Shadow Warrior, which was very nice. Yeah, it's still kind of nice. I, I like how many themes they can do around a beach. I like how many themes they can do around, uh, like, Christmas somewhat. Like, you know, there were a few things. Oh, come on. There we go. Do I dare go in there? Couple of nabbers and enemies that I'm just going to kick past instinctively. How, how are the Shadow Warrior reboot? I've only played bits of Shadow Warrior 2013. I have not played the other reboots, unfortunately. Um, let's see if we can just use more rockets to get through here. Very, very nice. Key card. Let's get the heck out of dodge. Definitely missed them. And the gates of <laughs> kill like overkill. Yeah, that's the best kind of kill. Or perfectly on point kill. Where it's like the exact amount of health. There we go. Okay, we've got one one more level to go. The alien remains. That's right. Kind of have a beach level without uh, having an alien base in there. They won't let you out. They won't let me out. Although all the enemies are still themed. Again, through the cracks though. Yeah, no, I've been having a good time, and I, I hope that you all have been enjoying watching these and somewhat uh, reliving through a, a piece of content that, unfortunately, you can't really buy anymore. You can buy off that Zoom store, so I'd recommend giving that a check out if you want to play through uh, good old old school Duke Nukem again. Look at these pipes, I love like swimming down. There we go. I'm a big sucker for underwater base levels as well. Oh, that's my little sunken ship and being chased by this guy. The guy in there. We definitely felt that. Check this out. Like one out of two view it. Oh, there's been a few. There's been a few people chime in and out. Oh my gosh, excuse me? What was that? There's that jam again. Now all I'm hoping for is that this is not just like an entire just outside area just for a secret. It may potentially just be an entire outside area just for a secret. We do have a few enemies, which are a bit hard to hit until you get all three of them in the same rocket, then it's not that bad. Yeah, I'm thinking this whole area is just here to like get goodies. So we'll figure out how to get back in. There we go, there's the pipe. 
back into the throw. So, what do we need? Or where can we go? We can keep continuing. There's your re red key card and your blue key card right there. We just need to grab them somehow. Where is it? How do water pistols work? Oh, exactly, exactly. I would like the key card. Yeah, I guess turning on the lights also works, but sure. Uh, well, I flicked a switch, so something would have opened. Need the blue key card for there, the red key card for there. Got the one up on that guy. Vacation is looking up. Thank you, John St. John. Every time. Isn't it weird that, like, this one, definitely there's a lot of effort to make it just atmospherically so different. Oh, I'm getting PTSD over this staircase. I remember this staircase so hard. I know there's probably just like tons of games with staircases, what are you talking about? But no, trust me. Trust me. Or it was Marathon, because Marathon had like a bit that had like a weird staircase going on. Maybe it's just a weird thing I latched onto, like I'm just like, what are my opinions on Duke Nukem 3D? And I just thought, that one staircase in the final level. The final level of Duke Caribbean. Oh my goodness. Again, very nice way to connect the uh, outside area. Very, very nice. Alright, do you remember the codes? All the codes. At the same time. Really? Really? Hold on. Where did he come from? Did he just literally appear because I... He did! He just li- vacation is looking up. This is- this is very irritating, excuse me. Stop it, please! I think it's because I'm putting in the wrong codes. I think it is actually. Are we good? Oh my goodness. The punishment is so severe. Do it right? I guess you got like, you know, thing thing, squirrely thing. I don't know if they appear elsewhere. Yeah, they're kind of everywhere, those symbols. Maybe, it, maybe that's just for bonus? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if we can get with the shrink. Let's see if we can get him with the shrink again. Sometimes it works and sometimes it just does not want to work. That's an all this you can complain and I still don't know what makes the uh, shrink ray kick in. Makes the shrink ray work. And then I got very lucky and I stand there. Yeah, I think it's chance based on, on these enemies in particular. 
every other enemy, it's like, you know, works for us, go. I guess it's as good as mine, what, these three? Oh, well, maybe I should be looking at that, so. Yeah, okay, just have them all on, I guess. Or not. Do we do the thing where these only turn on... I think there's just a lot associated with them, that's why. Okay. There we go. Clear a way out. Oh my goodness, excuse me. Also, the Z fighting again. I wonder if it's a 4K thing. Well, like, I'm looking at this going, man. I think I need to do this in order to... Oh my gosh, stop, oh, please. Every time you press the wrong one, it's like, no. Nope. Gonna make a dude appear on you. I'm so deeply terrified. Okay, that one just had health appear. We just press every button. Well, oh, that's a fun sound. That's a fun set. Oh. I'm about to be terrified. Oh, there's one. There's two. There's bound to be one downstairs. close, avoiding that guy the whole way. Ah. That's what you get for just respawning enemies everywhere. Also, this was open the whole time. I wandered around and I was like, oh yeah. Alright, so, there's the... These are the part with the, uh, the codes, the most menacing... I know, right? I know. Uh, where was the part with the cards? I feel like it was very close. Yeah, I was like, it was very close to here, was it not? Yeah. So there's your two bits. I've revealed the blue key. Should I be also revealing the red key? I need to also be revealing the red key. Okay. Take the wonder back. Up we go, oops, yep. Uh, we've got the the one door, which shows you your key cards, and if I hit that, there's gonna be a guy. Oh no, we're good. But that one on the left is closed. I'm also revealing all these extra things over here. Okay. Which one activates the red key card? They they all look like they don't do it. Uh Yeah, that as well. I I'm not sure about the shapes. Like the it seems that if I had to guess, and if you can kind of see off the Z fighting, there's three shapes back to back. But they change color, so it's yellow, orange, green, and then it's like orange, green, yellow. So I think what they really, really want you to do is like note here, and it's like green, yellow, red, like particularly with the shapes. Oh, it's kind of orange, I know. So in particular, it's this shape. Uh, the yellow one was... Uh, like this weird plus one and then the green one was the the twos so if i have like that as the filled in pattern in theory we're done but 
I've done the blue. I haven't done the red. I'm not too sure what the red puzzle is. Not sure what that button was, but okay, sure. Um, it's gonna be something silly again. Do we dare? Do we need to look it up again? Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, this is just a secret. We're just It's just a secret, guys. It's just a secret. At least that's nice. You can make a getaway. Why? Yeah, I was like, why can I go in here? Ah. Bit of help. But, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, that's not open. And... What I've done here hasn't made this open. And I can see this whole time, so... I think every single one of these makes a... kind of sound because it is activating the enemy to spawn behind you. Whereas, like, the right ones in particular aren't. There's got to be, like, another room somewhere, right? This can't be the eventual end point, but... I'm at 88 out of 100 kills. Like, a part of me feels like, mm, we're right at the end, then we're right at the end. The only thing I can think of is maybe something back down here. Probably, yeah, exactly this. Okay, so maybe I'll go up here. They always have the symbol. So maybe that's the tell? Is it go up to each one and you do... That, that, that. Yeah, I'm here at the yeah, okay. Because that's the pattern, it's always... Like, circle, circle, liney thing. Which is, is literally right next to this as well. Every single one of these has the same symbol. I don't know why I look past that like a ton of times. red key card we should be able to get the heck out of dodge real real soon uh, open that up get the octa brains what is this non-euclidean <laughs> just room casually back here I'm not really too sure what, what I'm even getting out of it. Oh, here we go. Very, very nice stuff. Very, very nice little secret. But yeah, I, I, <laughs> bit of the non-Euclidean goodness. You gotta love it. Anyway, let's open this up and see what's on the other side. All the suiciders. I'm hearing them. They're teasing me. What are we up against? What are we up against? Hey, it's the beach ball. That was the real villain. Nah, I'm just kidding. It was, uh... It was the inflatable dudes. The bouncing boys. Other than that though, I mean, it's basically just the final boss again. Just circle strafing anyway, so... Nothing too weird. And then it crashed. And then it crashed. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna give that one another go. <laughs> wow. You see that? Like, 
Nearly had it there for a hot second. <laughs> Amazing ending. Amazing. All right, let's let's give it another another just crack. It's time to limbo. Hey, I'm looking to score. Not the beach ball ending. That's because I murdered every single babe. In an effort to end Duke's vacation permanently, the dying alien overlord initiates the self-destruct system. With the base exploding around him, Duke desperately looks for a way out. Duke finds an escape pod and quickly releases it, rising slowly to the surface. I'm feeling a lot of Duke cautiously here. opens the hatch to find... So Duke finally gets the vacation he deserves. The end. Oh, I had the super weapon the whole time. It's just the, the Devastator. It's been there for a while, but it's just... I haven't really needed to fight, like, the super bosses that much, so... It's been all good, but... There we go! That's the double... Expansion... Uh, spectacular. I hope you enjoyed it. I like how, uh, the second one sort of took... Just as long as the, um... The Duke it out in DC, but the... Yeah, no, the, the... Definitely a better... Yeah, oh yeah, the Christmas one's a joke. I don't even know... It's so strange how just little content there is, given that they did the fairly okay Duke Zone 2. Like, it's a bit more experimental, but it's got ideas, it's got things going on. Duke Caribbean? It's a great little level pack. Nice and well-themed. Lots of tight level design as well. I do like Duke It Out in DC, it's just something very nice about that whole architecture but ultimately yeah i feel like duke nukem 3d at its strength really is when you have those real environments to work with so good fun great stuff would highly recommend if you can get yourself a copy of it uh until then i'd like to thank you all so very very much for watching if you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy it or anything that happened along the way uh feel free to uh Follow on Twitch where I stream at 8:30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time every Monday. And if you, yeah, if you miss parts of this, I uh, just catch the vod on YouTube um, at some point. So yeah, good sense of ambience. Yeah, yes, you do follow on Twitch. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm on YouTube. If you want to uh, see that? And uh, I know we talked about Brazil. So if you're banned in Brazil, uh, I'm not on Twitter. Actually, I'm, uh, even if you're not in Brazil, uh, I'm not on Twitter. You don't have to follow me there. But I'm on the Fetty. So just see in the descriptions. Uh, you'll find m.bandout.com. And I'm there. I'll say some stuff from time to time. So have a good one, Fetty. Glad you were around for the ride. And uh, yeah, no. Don't <laughs> don't stay up too late like I am. It's nearly midnight already. We didn't cross the midnight barrier. We're doing okay. So uh, don't stay up too late. Eat your greens. Uh, hope luck goes better on your side, and don't let, uh, what's the term? Don't let the wind catch you out. It's a, this is a very cryptic message, but, yeah. Have a good one, peoples. Peace.